some spots with a pussy back. Warrior Class Podcast, the one and only. Warrior Class Podcast, not like the phone is. Warrior Class Podcast, we teach the homies. Warrior Class Podcast, won't leave it lonely. But then be everybody. And I'm Nick is always taught if we clown, clown. We clown on everybody. Welcome to Warrior Class. With the teachers with pass. And you will too if you pass. Right. This is the importance of the clinch in self-defense. Not the booty cheek clinch when you're so scared that you clinch your booty yeah. cheek sometimes you can. Not that, that will it will if if you clinch wrong, that's <laughs> gonna happen. Uh they, they could happen to you. Greetings, Eugene. Uh Mr. welcome Mason. team Orca. All right. I know I got and, some new folks. Orca. Here. Um People say, you know, kill a whale, and orca is actually a porpoise. Hmm. So, well, I, I think actually more a dolphin, actually. It's right. it's a, it's the larger dolphin. That they call a killer whale, but it is they not. Call it, it's not a whale at all. It's a dolphin. Um, so, but but it, it kills. Actually, not like people calling it a killer whale. It will kill, but so can a dolphin if it wants to. A dolphin's it, killed. It weighs thousands of pounds. Dolphins kill seals. So it, it, it could kill a human if it wanted to. Right. Um, you know, they 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 they're usually more intelligent than they're about as intelligent as a human, but more uh moral than a human. Right, right. Uh people say, well, different moral. No. Uh, th- there was a couple that went swimming in the ocean, and uh, they decided, you know, to have a baby they, they, in the ocean. And I said, man, they, I, I wish they had filmed this. Mm. They decided to have a baby in the ocean. And maybe they did film it. I'm not sure. But um, now you're in the ocean, so you should expect things to happen. But they, you know, they having a nice, you know, in, in the middle of the ocean, too, which is insane to me. And my wife said, hey, we're going to have a baby in the ocean. Cool. I'm thinking we're at the shore or something. And she said, no, we're going out to the middle. I'm like, hell no. There's too much stuff there. My wife and face there. Yes, I'm. So as they're having a baby, dolphins come and surround them. So the husband is panicking. But the wife feels calm. She said, no, I think we're okay. Hmm. And the dolphins, you know, making a, the sounds they make or whatever. And uh, they all at one point make the same sound like that. And she oh, starts pushing. The baby comes out. Wow. And she gets the baby. And they all look. They're moving their heads, you know, in the same way they look. And then she said they just disperse. Damn. They swam off. They, they were there to help bring that baby there. That's my mom. I said that baby should always be taught a respect for the sea. You mm-hmm. should give it some kind of name. They they were white, so they, they probably didn't practice African tradition. If if they did, they would have gotten a name probably dealing with Olokun. Right. You know. So and, and just so y'all know, Olokun is it, Olokun is the Orisha of the ocean. Ominiki is a name, Olokun name. Ominiki is the name. Olokun is also if you want to use the patron uh, deity of enslaved Africans, um, most Olakun people, I mean, people born with that energy, they, to be successful, to be happy, they have to deal with black things. When people say blackity black. I definitely they got to deal, with, black. <laughs> I can see gotta deal with blackity <laughs> black things. So they're going to have natural hair. They're going to have they're gonna sell African garbs. <laughs> they're doing African martial arts. They're gonna right. be into African things, right? Mm-hmm. There's this one girl, little girl, uh, and her parents would, you know, say she got to do dance, she got to do these the arts, mm-hmm. but it has to be African. Mm-hmm. What she does has to be African, or she's not going to be happy. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that you know they didn't tell her that they push her to see where she would go with her uh, stuff. And she is attracted to the African dance, African. Wow. You know, she was t- training with me. Peace, our manifesto. Are um, the Orisha same as the Netters? Uh, no, I, I hate to do that. Uh, similar, I mean, but just like Ogun is the 
god of war but so is the great bear spirit in certain native american cultures but that yeah netaru yeah i know uh so you can say that because the sports are nature so as far as sports are nature they're the same but characteristic wise they're going to be different right 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 that's what i was going to say it's the same principles right. but not the exact same they don't translate not not completely no right right so uh in aku a-k-h-u is the god of war in the comedic tradition uh yes yeah, similar concept i manifest so in the comedic tradition aku is the god of war ogun is the god of iron and war right not just the god of war okay so but the same concept principles and the, uh, what they stand for yes that's, that's uh, the sports of, the sports of the nature same uh the eagle in certain traditions is the here comes uh, the eagle is the sky god but also the god of communication right mm -hmm. well that's a shoe is the god of communication in the five um people say a shoe the devil that comes from a uh if you watch the episodes of african spiritual tradition uh, I mean, African spiritual resistance, we deal with this, but uh, Eshu is not the devil. Uh, only very westernized, Christianized Yoruba would say that foolishness. Right. Um, a, a Yoruba Christian pr priest, Yoruba priest, not priests like Ifa, like I'm a priest. Right. I'm talking about Yoruba Christian priest. I think he was a Catholic. Uh, he spread that lie. So people would be afraid of their own traditions and come over to Catholicism. Mm -hmm. That's all dealing with capitalism. That's about money. That's about power. That's dealing with capitalistic. You use when you, any religion wants, when, it's, when it's capitalistic, it's gonna do manip manipulative things like fun slavery right <laughs> um you know things of that nature fun the uh, abduction of children so mm -hmm. and i'm not just talking about the catholic church no that's i'm not just talking about the catholic church <laughs> right so exactly. i'm not excluding it either but <laughs> but uh because the catholic church is known i mean the things they've done insidious over history so you're gonna make me talk you're gonna make she me say was. something i wasn't gonna say nothing but because because we talked about it briefly i watched four episodes and i finished the fourth uh, episode. shogun yeah and and i must say shogun. they're doing a great job of giving you the understanding of what protestants and catholics were doing over there what their goal was and how they were moving and what they thought of the people that they were so-called you know saving so I, I and, and and how I mean even the one person uses the church as currency. So he says, you know, you do this thing for us, you can build a church in my city. Showing you just the corruption, like it's 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 not about religion at all. It's it, it's it's um. Well, anyway, yeah, so I think that's a, it's a good example of uh, what you were just saying, how religion was being used as a tool for manifest destiny, basically. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think that's really wild. Something I've seen in the news that I thought was very interesting that people are talking about, Elon Musk. You know, I don't know if you've seen it, by the way, he said that he's um, he wants them to, the America to do away with... Um, what he call it the, the the diversity uh act you know where, where um it's not called uh, what it used to be called affirmative action mm -hmm. but it changed the name of it but he said that america should do away with it mm -hmm. and so he had a, a a post that he put he said the average iq of a u.s air force pilot is about 120 and the figures i've seen for major airline pilots range from 150 to 130. 115. 115 to 130 excuse mm -hmm. me by contrast this means a graduate from a from those the graduate from one of those uh, United Airlines HBCU partners is about 85 to 90 based on the average SATs at those schools. The SAT correlates reasonably with IQ. To put this in context, the HBCU IQ averages are within 10 points of the threshold for what is considered 
borderline intellectual impairment. Um, what he basically goes to say is, we ain't going, we're not, America ain't going to understand that uh, diversity inclusion is a problem until airplanes start dropping out the sky, until black pilots start crashing because of the fact that the IQ is so low. So I just wanted to speak to the fact that I don't know if many people understand the history of the SAT and the IQ test, but it's been proven that they are culturally and racially biased. It's been proven, on, especially on the IQ oh, test, okay. it's been proven time and time again that is made, designed for middle class Europeans. That's what it's designed for. That's what it's made for. And for everybody else to look inferior. So the fact that he he's, a, he, he's an intelligent man, he knows that. So to use that information to try to prove your point, your, I'm not, your prejudice point, it's just ridiculous. And this is somebody that, you know, a lot of, I see a lot of black folks kind of um, champion. I think he claimed that he black or something. I don't no, know, something no. ridiculous. No, he, but, but so number one, he's, he's certainly a racist. Uh, the whole thing with IQ and SAT correlating is a lie. Okay, so oh, yeah, I forgot 120 you. is considered genius level IQ. Um, and I'm just sharing this so you know it, it doesn't correlate. On the SAT, I got a 1600. Damn, that, that's, that's perfect. a perfect score. So my my IQ should be, I think, perfect is 200. My IQ is only 158. Mm -hmm. So consider genius level, but. It should be two hundred. It doesn't still doesn't correlate though. So yeah. it, yes, it's, it's genius level IQ, but it does not correlate with getting the sixteen hundred. The way I got got the sixteen hundred. That's how you know the difference. Um, and and if it wasn't culturally biased IQ test, I don't know. Maybe I would have got higher. Mm -hmm. But there were certain things in there I remember that answering. Yes, then I got told later that should have answered this way and I'll, I'll i'll tell you what it is in a second but the way i got the 1600 and i'm working with my daughter now on she's about to take the sat she's she graduating uh yay me she's 15 she's graduating from high school hey, in mean. may okay so the, the way i'm getting her there we're doing math tricks where you're able to do math equations like that. There's a book you can get called Math, Trip, uh, math Tricks and Tips, book one and two. So you know that. I studied those books for a year before I took the test. Wow. Did the studied. whole thing and then so I studied the whole thing, studied it again a couple of months before I took the test. I also have gotten my daughter, uh, so look where she's weak at. I was never weak in this, but in uh the use of the colon, semicolon, mm. and the comma. Well, that confuses writer. most people. Yeah, that got me. That got but, me. but because I, I write a lot. I was forced to understand that mean right now I the proper that. usage of those, right? And even now, sometimes still, I, I have to go back when I edit my books and look, say, oh, snap, I got, or when I have it edited, I, oh, I should have had a, a comma here instead of a, or a semicolon here instead of a mm -hmm. colon or, you know, that kind of thing. So um, that's how you, you learn the tricks to, to take the test with speed, but you know certain things in that are key. They're going to be talking about fractions. If you weaken fractions, you learn the the tricks that they call hacks now mm. to be able to do fractions easily. Okay, um, fractions can be converted to decimals. You take decimals and you have decimals and you have uh, like say that whatever 3.4 times uh 
of 10. Okay. 3.4 times 10. Right. You take away all decimals, you take the zeros away, and you got now you go. So now that would be 34 times one, correct? Okay. 34. So you got 3.4 times 10. Take away the zero from the 10. That's a one, right? Mm -hmm. 3.4, take away the decimal, that's 34. 34 times 1 is 34. 3.4 mm -hmm. times 10 is 34. Oh. So those little things will allow you to move. So I learned all those little tricks. I could have been in college. God yeah. dang it. Probably. See? 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 You didn't know me. Then, you know what I mean? I didn't see, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so you know, right know, knowing me, knowing me is just a, a blessing. That's what they you know, say. It's a blessing. So, that's I mean, that's what, you know, about. So, um, I use those little hacks and tricks, and, and I had a strong memory. So, when I got the Dungeons and Dragons books, I remember, you know, you could go to me and say, well, "Where's so and so?" It's on page so and so, and so paragraph so and so. Some in terms of a lot of it's based on um, being able to come up with formulas and remember well, well, you got to remember the tricks right remember the tricks. right and, and just pull them out your head and then, then keep practicing practicing if, if, if you don't have a good memory just keep practicing so yeah. now training. you just pull it out it, it's all training so that's how i did that you can't do that on iq test so they do not correlate right right they right. do not correlate so eli Musk is a goddamn lie i gotta tell you yeah, i got time <laughs> he's a goddamn lie He's a goddamn racist. Yes. That whole statement, and, and and yes, the IQ test is racist. That's why it's not valid no more. Exactly. The worst part of this man is that... Um, and HBCUs, the, the average IQ 80 to 90, fuck him. Another part. That part. The, uh, and another part of this is when people act like that, that things aren't the way they are in America. Like... I don't know who's more delusional, rich people or poor people sometimes. So, but to, to we know for a fact, it's been proven and shown, and you can do this yourself. It's been shown. You can look this up. Just your name, just your name being looked at on the application. If it looked black, your chances of getting that job just dropped by 40 to 50% just by your last name being Jenkins, God damn it. So don't tell me that you don't need some type of diversity inclusion in certain situations. Because in certain situations, you are being, I swear to goodness, I worked with this woman on set, which is gonna remind me of these two stories, I'm glad I remember that. The woman on set just told me, she, she has a really strange name. It sounds um, almost, it sounds Indian-like. And she gets work, and one time an employee told her that she, that they felt that she should include a picture in her resume. And she was like, well, why would I do that? It's like, well, your name is just so deceiving. It's like, oh, you mean you can't tell I'm black? Motherfucker. That's the kind of bullshit these people be on. So diverse and include whatever. If you're out there trying to get into certain places, then you're going to, you need that. You're going to need that because folks is looking at your name, trying to see anything they can to find out if this is a black or a white person that they can use to discriminate against you. So yes, this is necessary. Elon Musk is an asshole. And I and I, you know, I feel sorry for people that seen this driving around and is spitting eighty thousand dollars on his vehicles, finding out it's the worst thing. It's already bad that we we who we are in a world where we're using people that hate us. We gotta use they so we force sometimes you gotta use the lights, you gotta put gas in your car. You know these folks don't like you. But to but to so the stuff you have to do that's one thing. But the stuff you don't have to do, I don't have to go to. I don't have to patronize this store. I don't have to buy this from this person. So when you find out you done bought something from a motherfucker that don't like you, that's gotta hurt. And if you don't have to keep it, give it back. How about that? So I want to do that and real quick while I'm running my mouth off. Just got back on set. I already told Bob one of the stories, but I didn't want to have to tell the second one twice. So I'm gonna tell y'all real quick. That Ryan started telling me, look at that. Just tap in real quick. Give us y'all full salute right, to the family. Oh, hey, hey, peace, right. peace. Back to you, right peace, back to you. How you feeling, comrade? Yes, sir. So real quick, man, this is, and this is, I'm telling this not to um to talk about violence or being in violence, but it's an all-around point I want to make about being in control of yourself, the situation, your environment, um, understanding risk and everything sometimes. And sometimes you might have to eat some shit. So 
two situations I done had. Well, I'm not eating fish in. <laughs> I knew he was going to say something about that. Mm -mm. Okay, maybe not eat no shit. So <laughs> I'm on set. My first time being back since the strike. I got lucky. I was supposed to just be doing this one scene. I had the pleasure of meeting Terrence Howard and, and on the scene. I end up staying, and now I'm, I'm, I'm just on this until I guess these couple scenes are over with. I'm going to be on it for a second. Um, reoccurring um, on this uh, movie being shot. So I got bumped up from a background to a feature, right? And I didn't think about how other people may look at that. In hindsight, once I explained the story to a friend, they kind of told me they put it in a different perspective and I see it different. So I was going to tell the story differently, but now I'm going to tell it with a little bit more truth and more detail. I was going to leave detail, a little bit of details out because I'm like, you know, I done gave my card out so many times. So many, if anybody could be watching this from the set and it could get back to the dude. But I don't care. And I'm going to tell you why, because I didn't realize after he, after saying the story over, I realized that this person absolutely knew what they was doing and it wasn't an accident. So what happened was at the end of the scene, at the end of the, the, the day when we wrap, we got to change clothes. So men go in a little tent, women go in a little tent, you zip it up, everybody changing their clothes. Well, it's so uh, crowded that some people, the tents are next to the wall. So some men are going behind the tents and changing behind the tent right there. And, and just coming from behind the tent once they finish or whatever. So we talking in the tent, men changing clothes, whatever. And these young dudes, I say young, they 30s, but young to me. So these young dudes, they hype because they finish. While me, I'm tired. I'm, you know what I mean? But you know how young folks, they hype at the end of the work day. Ah! So I wasn't paying attention. But this young dude got by, got right by my ear outside, outside the tent and just screamed. He just said, ah, real loud, right by my ear. I didn't realize at the time, but he knew I was right there because I'm talking. You can hear me talking outside the tent. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to, it's going to take forever to tell you why I know he knew it was me. But he knew it was me. But so he yelled. And I was like, yo, man, you're in my damn ear, bro. You don't chill out, whatever I said. So dude's like, man, fuck your ear. Yeah. So I'm like, I was like, whoa. As a matter of fact, folks in the tent was like, whoa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa, hold up. I'm like, hold up, bro. Ain't no fuck me nothing. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to talk to me like that. So then the dude said, man, I'll put my KCID in your ear. Just, I just, I, ain't, I mean, I ain't, what? You going to do what? Dude say, dude say, y'all can, I ain't, dude say, yeah, I can fight too. I never, I never told nobody I could fight. What are we talking about? I said, look, we ain't got to talk no more. Put my clothes on. And then I got out of the tent, went around, looked for who said. So I'm I'm looking for people now. I'm like, hey, was that you, bro? Who was that? I went, I'm going to the tents. Cause yo, was that you? Was that you? I go behind the tent, I don't see nobody. I'm just asking folks, is did them? Is you the one talking shit to me? You the one? I should have chilled out. The person that did it, they basically ran from the scene of the crime. They didn't want to be seen. It wasn't really nothing. They was cutting the food. I'm just not the, the food to cut with. But they were playing. But I ain't playing. So I could have let it go at that point. I realized they ain't trying to be found. The other people that seen that it was them, they see that they ain't trying to be found. So they look like a cop right now. That ain't good enough for me. That ain't good enough for me. I see this big, he, I was about to say, what are you playing on the show? Like, that would be a, get me in trouble a few ways. I ain't supposed to do that. I'm buying it by, legally I can't do that. But he's a big dude. He's playing a big dude. So I see the big dude kind of walking Across the room, I said, hey, bro, hey. He looked up, I said, hey, was that you talking to me? He thought, what you talking about? I said, the, the, the motherfucker that said they was inviting me all this shit. He was like, well, you know, uh, uh, it, it was you. Let's go talk about it. So we walk outside. I get outside. I don't even turn my back to him. I put my knife up. Ooh, I hope nobody hear that. Mm. My, my, my training knife, because, you know, I got training <laughs> knives in my bag. So I didn't want to, you know, my training knife is still a tool. So I left my training knife on this, uh, in, in there and I walked outside. I didn't even see how far he was behind me. Walked outside, he came outside, and he already got this. He he a deer in headlights now. Nah. So I walk up to him. I got my hands just like this, just like we show y'all. So my hands are like this. And I said, bro, who would you think you was talking to out there? And he's like, I said, I because you weren't talking to me, bro, because I don't talk, I don't talk like that, and I don't fucking play like that. 
And so I'm walking towards him. And as I get close, he said, are, are we playing? Are we joking? What the fuck are you talking about? I said, no, motherfucker, I'm not playing and I'm not joking. I'm for real. And, and then um, some people came out. One of the dudes that was with him, let me see what's going on. And the, one of the dudes that was with him brought one of the ADs. She came out. So if I'd have had my hands on him at the time, I was I was gonna be gone. AD assistant director. Yeah, so I'd have been taken from the set. I would have never been allowed on that studio, not just that particular. So when he came out, I, I saw him come out. I looked, I said, I ain't trying to show off. We're gonna talk about this again. He said, I ain't trying to show off neither. And then, <laughs> and then we went back in. So I, I said, I, I'm burning up. They taking my, my stuff off or whatever. And I think about it. About, about an hour go by because that's how long it takes to take my, my stuff they got on me. And I, I realized I'm going to be on the set for about another week with this dude. If I'm not going to do something to him, I need to make peace with this so I don't have no bad blood, nobody. So I went to him and said, hey, man, you know what, bro? I, I could have handled that different, man. I, and it, and you just seen the Man, me too, bro. I shouldn't have, you know what I mean? I, hey, don't even worry about it, man. Next day, I seen him give me a pound. Hey, you smoke? No, nah, I'm, nah, I'm good, bro. Try to make this homeboy. It's cool. We ain't got to be homeboys, but keep the peace. If we ain't go, and that's, and my thing is with that situation, the, the third one is, the second one is much shorter. My thing with that one is with anything, if you're going to do it, do it. If you're not, leave it alone. Ain't no need for us to be looking at each other. I bought, I'm telling my people, I would fuck them. He telling his people he would fuck me up. And we just, now we divided and we black folks on the set, man. We don't need that shit. And this ain't about nothing. Let he can't me. he can't say what production he was in on Manifesto. No, sir. You got so I can't right now. Uh so you gotta let that go. But I will tell you this: uh Kevin Hart and Will Packer are doing a show, a, a movie about uh something that happened back in history in, in the 70s, a, a historical thing that happened back in the South. So it's gonna be it's a really good movie. It's one of those star-studded movies where everybody make these cameos. So you're gonna see everybody and it's gonna be real good. So yes, sir. We don't play fight, bro. Be as the wisdom has taken be like times to go. Hey, I'm with I'm with a wise dude. So sex, so this is the end of the next night. 14 hours. I'm tired. This is the longest I ever had on Stacey Adams. I'm aggravated. You know what I'm saying? It's time to go home. And the bad part is I've been rapped for five hours. I just got to sit around because they ain't going to rap me till they rap the, the rest of the folks. So we on the van. It's time to go. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And this brother, this brother from the continent, he gets on the bus and he's playing Caribbean island music very loud. So as he goes on the bus, hey, I got. I know what you want to hear. He's playing up. And, and I was like, he sat right behind me. So I'm just, I'm smiling, and I'm like, brother, man, hey, man, you know, I, I, I love the music, but boy, at two o'clock in the morning, you know, and, and 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 out in front of everybody, you know, somebody else, you know, may not like the music. So we, you know, we want to be courteous of what everybody like. Oh, I got you, but no, everyone loves this music. They love this music. I said, like, man, I'm sure that everybody don't yeah. love the music at two o'clock in the morning. The the, the, the black woman beside us said, eh. Like, I ain't trying to say nothing, but he right. Of course, the white dude beside her is, I don't want to hear nothing with a drum, motherfucker. What is you doing? I don't hear that shit. And so, you know, this older folks, this, I don't know. I, you know, I told you before, I'm always put in this position. You know, I got to be the one, speak up for the group. So he's like, no, trust me, trust me. You, This music keep you in a good mood. You, you be upbeat. I mean, that's brother, please, man. I'm telling you, I don't want to hear any music at two o'clock in the morning. I don't care if it's the best sound I've ever heard in life. I do not mm -hmm. want to hear it, bro. But I appreciate you. I'm trying to still smile. I'm still me. I appreciate you, bro. No, trust me. Just, just, just take, give it a minute. Give it a minute. It will work if you would like it. Brother, please, man. Just come on, man. Now the other people are saying, come on, man. He asked you nicely, man. Cut the, we don't want to hear no music. So he's like, oh, okay. I, okay. I, I, I turn, I, no music. No music. No music. No music. So he switched the song. To another Caribbean, start looking at. So now the bus drivers, hey man, we ain't even pulled off yet. <laughs> bus driver said, hey man, look, you gotta cut that off, man. You can't have it. And if you've ever worked, which he has, because I've seen him, the they, the van plays the music or not. You don't play nothing in there. You don't got earphones. You don't play music. 
And you can always tell the guy driving the van if you don't want to hear music, he got to turn it off too. You know what I'm saying? So the man, the van got aggravated. You got to turn it off, bro. Hey, cut, cut it off. He's like, okay, okay, okay. It's playing low now. Still low enough for everybody to hear it. Dude had uh, mental issues, man. And I was going to help him. <laughs> I, had, I had vowed. You ain't you. You got mental issues, but you ain't crazy. <laughs> we all got mental issues. Mm. Mine's starting to show now. My mental issue. I got mental issues when it comes to motherfuckers acting crazy. They give me mental issues. So now he turns it low. I said, bro, are you fucking serious? No, nah, I'm not smiling. Everything else was smile. I turned, I said, bro, are you fucking serious? Like, you're bothering me. You're bothering the woman beside you. You're bothering the brother beside you. Are you do you want to be uh, have a negative impact on our lives right now? No, no, that's not what I want, but do you want to hurt us? Do you want to harm anybody on this? But no, brother, I don't. You're harming us right now with your music, brother. Could you please help us? Yes, yes, brother. I understand. The music stay the same. Don't turn wow. it off. I said, you know what? I got something for you. I'm going to pray for you. When we get off this van, I'm going to pray for you, boy. I'm going to pray for your ass as soon as we get off. He said, yes, thank you. He put his hands out. I said, oh, no, no, I don't think you understand what I mean. I'm going to show you when we get off. We got off the bus. I get off the bus first. I turn around, waiting for him to come up. I, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do something to this motherfucker. I'm out of my mind now. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm out of my mind. He walks up to me, and he got his hand sticking out like this. So I, I slap his hand away, and I push him. And I didn't expect for him to go so far back. You know what I'm saying? But he, went, he, wasn't, he wasn't expecting to get pushed. So I pushed him because I want you to know. I'm not even, I want to hurt you now, and I want you to know I'm about to hurt you. So I'm not going to hit you off guard. I want you to know it's about to happen. I want you in it. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all wrong because I wouldn't have did that normally. Mm -hmm. But I'm mad. You know, I'm not thinking properly. So really, I gave him time, if he had any sense, to pull the tool, to grab something, whatever the chance. The you know attitude. what I'm saying? He had a tool. In that big the radio. Yeah, he, exactly. To use the tool that he had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... His eyes is when I pushed him. His eyes is why is he doing this? And I start walking. Up, I'm, I'm walking up to him real fast, and I'm about to grab his motherfucking ass. And and the white dude that was sitting beside me, I sit beside him, got between us, and say, "Hey man, you you don't want to you want to do this? You don't want to do this, do you?" And I thank goodness for our white savior. Let me see. Yeah, I've never savior. had a white savior. White savior I've never king. had a freaking Thank God white, savior. white savior. Woo! I'm sorry. Okay. I should have said just a, a person. Anyone that made shit in Naga? Yeah. And the hell y'all be doing this south? Say let me get in. Me need it. Come on, go Shango. He was a he was a European, a European, and he did save he his in. man and save his man life. But you know, but but seriously, he, he as stepped a joke. in and and and, and brought peace. He did step in. Isn't that what white people do? No. He really, he, <laughs> what he wanted to be able to say is, I tried to stop him. That's all he really now, wanted to do. I manifest, so he knew the language because he was speaking with them. And he kept. Did he know language? Of course he knew the okay. language. Ah. Yeah, he knew the language. Man. Now, see, what, what I would have done in that situation, uh, because if, anytime you put your hand on somebody, it can lead to death. So he didn't earn death. Right. That radio would have died. God damn it! I wish I'd have been thinking of that. I'd, I'd, ah! Right on the bus, I was ah! like, look. I'd have locked his his wrist up, taking that taking that shit. Splat, splat, splat. Oh, and gave it back to him. Thinking you like know? a parent. You thinking like a parent? Yeah. Damn it! I wish I'd have had my parent, bro. Ah! I'd have destroyed that, but and it gave me so much joy. That was what I was supposed to do. Holy shit, boy! You better not play that motherfucker again. I'm waiting for you. Ooh, I got that's why, and, that's or, why you and, after you destroy it, and then you put it on your lap, then you ready. <laughs> I dance around it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I take a broken speak and be beaten. Right. <laughs> Man, you you're like you're right. It brought me joy. <laughs> yeah, you know. Peace. I mean, you are the best for that, Baba. I appreciate you. I should have called you when the shit was going down. And got some <laughs> advice right there. I'm about to beat this motherfucker ass when I get off this van. But what should I do? Destroy his damn boom and, and so, and you all always remember whenever somebody puts their hand on you or you put your hand on death, can come exactly. So, you don't allow anybody to put their hands on you, and you don't put your hands on folks because, unless you plan to kill them, 
Yeah, bro. So, you know, a lot of times people will say to me when they find my martial arts, I want to make you mad. I'm, like, I'm a martial arts, I'm not a psychopath. Yes. And if they really understood what a real combatant is about, you don't have to ever worry about me putting my hands on you unless I plan on killing you. Right. And that's where we have to be because just like pulling the pistol, you don't pull that shit unless you're going to shoot. Right. These shouldn't touch a person unless you plan on beating their ass to death. You know, or giving it your 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 <laughs> A game, trying your best to. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's the first thing I thought when I got. And outside, when you pushed him, serious. when you pushed him, he tripped. Could have failed. Oh, hit his head on the on the on the band. He could have died anyway. Yeah, and that's why. And same, somebody pushes you, and you say, "Wait, hey, just push me." No, 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 no. Because you could fall, bust your head. And you're out of here. Your, your, your wife, your husband, they don't have a spouse no more. Right. Your children don't have a father no more. Your mama don't have a, a child no more. Right. Your siblings don't have a sibling no more. Don't allow that. Right. right? Or you're never the same again. Yeah, you or you're never right. You were brilliant. Right. You, Elon Musk said, oh boy, he's the smart one. And you get your head busted. You ain't, you ain't that 80, 90 HBCU. You, 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 I've seen, but now you lower than the 8090 HBCU. I've seen an intelligent brother that was on the road fall off a bike, just fall off a bike, and it looked like a fall that many of us have done as kids. And I, and honestly, never been right after that. School c- c- relationships, able to communicate with people. This was one of my closest friends, uh, so I'm not gonna really put it out there like that. But every um, the folks that I'm talking about, the folks that know know what I'm talking about, like just a bike accident. So a fall is a serious thing. That's why, again, the first one of the first things you learn when you come to us is you learn how to fall. Roll. You learn how to fall and roll. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my friend at Donald Clark. Y'all heard me talk about Dennis got stabbed by bubbles. That's yes. his brother. So, well, Donald, brilliant, was the. Uh, Number one wrestler in the United States, mm. uh, one of the top five judo players in the United States. Mm. He had a brain aneurysm. We were always. He went to De La Salle High School. I, I went to Whitney Young. I got off the, the train first, and he would continue on downtown and switch or whatever. So when I and we've been doing this for years. As soon as I'm getting off, one of us would, you know, try to hit the other one. I try to hit him and break off. He, he, <laughs> I hit me, you know, that, that was the point thing. And then he would hit, I throw a cover, try to hit him again, that kind of stuff. That, But this time I hit him, pow! And he's, he, I said, something wrong. Donald didn't try to stop it or try to come at me himself. So what's going on? I said, what's going on, Donald? <laughs> and he waved. I'm like, what the hell? And I, I hesitated, like, should I get off the bus? I mean, off the train? So I, but I, um, you know, trying to get to school on time. I jumped off the train, but I'm, I'm just thinking about him all day. So I go to see him when I go home. He lived across the street from me. So I go to see him, and his mother said, I, Donald hasn't uh, come home yet. He hasn't come home. He'll beat me home. Mm-hmm. He didn't come home yet because I, I, I had sports. Well, he had sports too after, but he would always beat me home. So I said, what's going on? So she sends her husband to look for him and basically traces the steps looking then they start calling the hospital because they can't find him. They found him in the snow on 47th Street. It was nowhere near where his school was. He had got off the train and just, he didn't know where he was at hmm. and passed out in the snow. He had a brain aneurysm. Donald was never right again, man. Hmm. I remember he was like, man, I can still <laughs> fight. Um, me and my boy Anthony were riding our bikes, we rode around to my block and we were chilling there drink some water he come i can still fight I, yo you know out here y'all y'all the you know the man around the men around here everybody know y'all got hands I, I i still can fight though so he kept you know tapping on anthony anthony's big strong dude he country strong but grew up in chicago on the west side so it was, it was hood strong right <laughs> and so he kept on and he said man stop you know stop man stop donald he kept on donald stop Okay. What? what? Kept hit, oh, oh, oh. Hitting him in his kidney and stuff. 
And so I told you, stop. Boom! Hit him in his liver. Now, liver shot a drop you anyway, but I need spawn with Donald need him in his liver one time. He he backed up and still came at me. Mm. And he was a big strong dude. Bad too. if you do that. But he <laughs> got he got that. hit. He got hit in his liver, and it wasn't a normal like oh people back up and kind of kneel or whatever. He just uh, he fell over like that brother in class who hurt his hip. Oh, yeah, that he was... fell like that. Boom! And then he was oh, 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 something messed oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. And me and Donald, I mean, me and Andy looked at each other. We both got a little teary eyed. I said, "Man, I'm out. I couldn't <laughs> take. I couldn't take seeing my boy like that." People say, "Well, damn, you didn't get him up." Nope. We both <laughs> rode on off to the sunset. We couldn't take seeing Donald, who was it was me, Anthony, and Donald, the hard hitters in our block, and see him reduce to that. Yeah, it's like seeing you. So, uh, aneurysm is your brain, but it had your brain affects your whole body. It had affected his whole makeup. Mm. Um, had a student got into an accident a bunch of insulation fell hit him in the head he said the only thing that saved him was Sabu once again talking about falls and roll where he fell but his head didn't hit because his head didn't hit the concrete where he's working at and those things hit him it killed him mm. he, he, he got knocked out he was comatose for a few days he comes out and he's in a wheelchair he gets out starts training again and I said, well, start from your knees. They were doing the clinches we're about to do today. And his wife was clinching with him. And she clinches and takes him forward to take him down. And the scream he gave was like a child when they fall hard for the first time. Mm. And I looked at my wife and said, he's done. Mm. And that was it for him training, really. I said, he's done. The, Cause he would never have even screamed. Period. If I threw him hard, he wouldn't right, scream. Right. But his wife and the scream that he gave, mm. he was done. So things happen to you. This way, you don't allow nobody to, to 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 hit you to do whatever because you can, like you said, not be right no more. So that's hell. Defending yourself is serious. Yes, and it could be a hell you don't even know you in. That's you're that's, so messed up. That's what I'm talking about. I, 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 we know the folks like that. So learning how to what well, so training what, being healthy. Real quick, what happened to Dennis? I was talking about they were pitching pennies, Dennis and his woman. No, yeah, you remember no, he asked him about did he survive? That's oh, 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 did he survive? Uh yeah, Dennis wasn't right no more either. I'm sure. And nice and, and sad to say, Dennis and Bubbles, they were no longer together. Yeah, of course. Yes, I, yeah, I wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, bubble, bubble looks so good. Bubbles had done it to me. We still been together. <laughs> I, I, I can, I can, I can just let that beauty go away. I can, me and Bubbles, I would hated Bubbles forever, but at least I get to wake up and just see that beauty all day long. I, yeah, I, I'd, I'd had it, you know. I'd be like, "Damn, you stabbed me, Bubbles," and I really want to kill you every time mm -hmm. I think about it. But looking at you, that go. Boy, you Bubbles, if you're around, you must truly have been a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful woman. Bubbles, I would imagine, probably looks good still. Like some of those women, when you, when you look and it's like, wow, they look really good. Like Bianca, what's her name? It's Bianca Ferguson. And her daddy is an actor too. She acted on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She looked like she was 19, but I think at the time she was 40. She is still incredibly because she was incredibly beautiful then so there are people like that yeah yeah and yeah. i would imagine I bubbles i mean bubbles on that level like whoa this is crazy hell and they called her bubble because she was so bubbly but she would put a knife to that you know what goddamn, I'm, I'm gonna uh, say this good. too before we get into oh, it five cent. um you know beauty i've been thinking about Beauty lately because the of the that's person thing about me. <laughs> that's I, not I, I, the, the, the person that's playing my girlfriend on this. Um, the person that's playing my significant other on or my date is um <coughs> like a like a fashion icon type person or whatever. Yeah, a celebrity, a celebrity or whatever. Um, so I can't wait till y'all see this too. 
I'm not familiar with this person. I'm from I was familiar with who they were when y'all heard the name, but I didn't know who they are on social, the, the, the social light. They're they they the, they the it right now, so to speak. But I didn't you know, know that. they dated a famous right. They did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't I didn't know I think about we're, that. We're engaged to them, but something I didn't know about that. And a few famous mo dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. um, the one of the, the big ones right now, they dated. Right. So I'm um when I'm seeing this person, I don't know this. So all I see is them for who they are. I don't see, I, didn't, I never followed them on social media. I don't, I ain't see them on the cover of blah, blah, and blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, I, I don't see the computer in the airbrush. I don't see none of that. I see the person in front of me. And the person in front of me, I'm about 25 years older. They small, they're like a small, a, a, almost, a, almost like a child of me, almost. A very young woman to me. My daughter, 18. You gotta be at least, at least, at least in 19. I was about to say at least 10 years older than her, at least 10. You know, at least 10. You don't have to be around 30 to be the just you have to look like a woman. You can't look like a pretty girl. You know what I'm saying? And she so I didn't I didn't feel what everybody was feeling. I didn't see everybody's feeling. And it made me realize that, you know, too, we're just talking about beauty. You know, beauty can be, um, I think, so let me just say, real beauty don't, really, like they say, don't ask for attention. It don't need no attention. Like real beauty don't need no lights, no cameras. You can see it out there at the grocery it's store. Not just, it's not just attractiveness. It's, it's right. internal. Magnetism. And and beauty ain't the same thing. Right. People don't understand that. It's people. It's people with incredible magnetism that aren't. Ex, ex, it's really beauty. Beauty, like you said, is inside. When somebody is beautiful, that's not sexy. It, it can be, but beauty is an inner thing. And everybody's like, she's so beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. And I believe she's attractive. I think she's very attractive. But she wasn't beautiful to me. No, there were women on set that were far more beautiful. When, when the first time I ever called a woman beautiful, <laughs> uh, I was called women fine, right? Like, you know, damn, you know, that kind of reaction. The first time ever I called a woman beautiful outside of my mama and my sisters mm. was the, when I was standing on the steps of Moss Mariam in Chicago. And I looked over the brothers over here, the sisters over there, and I said out loud, I was I was looking, and I said, Man, those sisters are beautiful. Mm. I'm talking to MGT, mm. GCC, and the Vanguard, those that's in the nation, right? I looked, I said, now it was some fine sisters on this side. Right, I understand. But when I went up, Beauty. the sisters that were in the nation, I said, those sisters are beautiful. And other brothers with me, they said, man, you ain't never lied. It's beauty, and I beauty. said, I said, I ain't never called a woman beautiful. My, my boy Anthony was right there. I said, I ain't never called a woman beautiful in my life. But this, other than my mama, my sisters, maybe. Mm. I said, this here? Wow. And that was one of the big attractions for me not even se- sexually or anything like that where this is producing women like that right i got to be a part of it and that's what I brought was, me I to the, the nation same way, like, like oh the shit they got this shit i felt the same when i went to freak i was like these women are okay all right maybe not it was a little different situation not freak me but not <laughs> but seriously freak i ain't see beauty <laughs> I, I saw fine but i ain't see beauty i was a body ideologist back then so <laughs> you know what i'm saying i had to do a lot of research be a freak. But but we gonna, we're gonna get to yeah, it yeah. though because now we're freaking this is real beauty. White woman walks into this place that I was bodyguard. White woman freak me. I'm and she totally said, confused. And she's followed by <laughs> brother. She said, Come come on in, niggas. I said, Well, what you say? Whoa, whoa, I lost my whole professional demeanor. What? She said, Come in, niggas. <laughs> Talking to dudes and they <laughs> slobbering. I said, What did you say? Now I'm not a security guard. I'm doing executive protection for somebody that. else. Said, I'm going to be a pro- professional. Things. I ain't supposed to say nothing because <laughs> I'm taking care of something. But I said, damn this. 
So the person that I was securing, who I won't name, I said, I'm going to go over here for a moment, you know, just sit tight. I went over there and said, say it again, like that, right? Mm -hmm. And the person that I was with was like, <laughs> that's why I'm going to say who it is, but say it again. She, and she looked back at the dude, said, hey, Shark, I'm new down here. Said, hey, Shark, what's up? What you going to do? I said, I, I'm not going to put my hands on, I'm going to put my hands on y'all. <laughs> if she says it again and y'all don't snatch your ass up yourself and throw out of here, I'm whooping y'all ass. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and they're like, hey, 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 to her. Uh, they, hey, they never hey, heard don't say that. nothing else. Go ahead. Go ahead on, girl. Go on, sit down over there. And they're like, this dude must be nuts. What's he talking to all us like this? He only got one pistol. They ain't heard, they ain't never seen no shit like that. And I wasn't gonna even use a pistol. Ruby. I was gonna be smacking them up like. God damn, I was going to be pimp handing them. <laughs> like, Real quick, y'all. Um, I know Amaniki is normally a, a, a quiet storm, but today she will be exceptionally she, quiet. No, not storm, whirlwind. She's usually a quiet war, uh, whirlwind. But yes. today she's going to be exceptionally quiet because she has strained her voice to the point where <laughs> she doesn't sound her beautiful self. Yeah, talk so about beauty. Exactly. Yeah. So she's going to refrain from using that beautiful voice unless absolutely necessary, like she needs to correct. But she's going to be her, her Olokun self. We talked about that earlier. There you go. Because Olokun, the ocean, at times can be you know, quiet. There you go. But the she's power is still there. She's only going to talk if she got a correct bobble on something. So we can right, get into right. it. That's only. That's only. <laughs> All right. So I mean, you're not going to do much talking because, um, <laughs> uh, you know, she ain't gonna have to correct me on too much. I'm not perfect, but hey. Okay, I'm gonna bring up the other uh the other camera. This is word class camera two. We are live. And we're up and let me bring down the other. Ooh, I brought the other one up. Sorry about that. There we go. Right. Techniques, techniques. Let's do it. Now you notice B.L.A. doesn't have camouflage on, so he's not disappearing into the background he's like last week. Today. But that that is great. That that means camouflage works. That does mean camouflage. Works. Okay, so a clinch. What is a clinch? A clinch is any time I am controlling someone's limbs. You are controlling someone's limbs and. For these purposes, limbs also include your neck, your hook, your extremities. Okay. Uh, but I prefer you think of this as it's another limb called extremities. A lot of times you may think about this being extended where it doesn't have to be because also the waist is also a limb in this case. Okay. So I'm controlling any part of this is a clinch. I can when I grab like that, that's a clinch. Okay. So anytime you grab and it's to control, to incapacitate, to kill, um, that is why you're clinching. Okay. Mainly to control, to incapacitate. Whenever you are, you lay hands on somebody. For you all, you're not soldiers. Your first thought shouldn't be to kill, but your second thought may have to be. Well, I got to kill this guy. He's, he's trying to kill me. I got to kill this dude. He's choking me. Uh, incapacitate him. Right. right. So <laughs> now, right. Uh, your thoughts should be on incapacitation and getting away, ending life. The reason why that shouldn't be your first thought is because not that he hasn't earned that. You're trying to hit me upside my head. He earned it. Right. But I will also be damaged if I take somebody's life. A lot of folks teach that really willy-nilly, just you know, just hit him in the throat. And then you, you cut down and open his guts up. Well, well, killing somebody affects you. If you don't know. So it's irresponsible just to, to, to teach somebody to kill somebody and you don't. Talk about because you probably don't know the you know, <laughs> mental effects right. that it has. So these people playing, you know, 
Kick his eye, kick him to the throat. You're playing. Pluck his eyes out. I know. I, you're not eyes out. pluck it because because how you practice that? <laughs> what fool let you practice that if you you only got two shots? <laughs> so that that's not happening. You don't that you train. You fight the way you train. You don't train to take somebody's eye out. I know a bunch of wing chun people. They do Bill G. Bill G. You say strike to the eye. I say no. You best train striking to the neck. And then your finger better be conditioned. Your best train striking to the liver because striking to the eye is not happening. So I know guys, they try to put on goggles. And then they ask me to come to their class, you know, to try out their ideas. So they, they, they say, you know, put the goggles on. I ain't putting the goggles on. <laughs> but put it on one of your students. And then, you know, this one brother who I know, he, ha, ha, ha. I said, let me, let me try that, please. And so I try. And the pat. You're not using your hip. And I would pop! Mm -hmm. And that shit would crack. Because they're scared of getting the shards in their eye. I said, you can't, you can't train with that. And you keep doing it, then the, the shards are going to go in their eye. Another friend of mine said, hey, we're going to train going so I dream this. You go next to the eye. Next to, and it seems smart. But me and him were drinking as we're talking about this. And I didn't know his students were coming. He had students that came from a whole other state. Not a, a state. We're in Chicago. Not like Indiana. Come from Gary or something, which is you know, 10 minutes. They were coming from another state, which I won't mention. So, well, I will. They were coming from uh, Michigan. And further than Detroit, Detroit by itself is about two hour drive. Mm -hmm. They were coming from about four hour drive. So there and then four hours back. And so we're drinking. Drinking cognac, what it is. Drink that yak. And they come and he's doing, and I was noticing, you know, when he, he would talk to him and they they train and he would kind of doze. Mm -hmm. So as he's doing it. His finger, I noticed his finger starts to open his baby finger. Now, I've been drinking too, so I started laughing because I know what's about to happen. And so he looks at me like, wondering why I'm laughing. I am crying laughing because I've already seen the accident and it, the reaction is so funny to me. And so as his finger wavers, it goes, boop, his baby finger in his student's eye. And I was like, I. I, it happened exactly how I saw it. The dude's reaction on his toes and then falling, everything. So I'm crying, laughing. The students who drove all the way down, they're looking at me laughing. They're looking at him. He's looking at me laughing because he's drunk. And I'm laughing, so he laughed. They said, he's really, they say he's really hurt, seafood. He looks, oh my, oh my God. So he's looking. And they said, well, and one of his students is a doctor. Mm -hmm. So she's checking, watch him take come over me. He said, And I'm crying out like, yeah, man. And now he's scared though, because their eyes are red. I'm super red. So they, they all had to leave. He said, hey, man, can you lock up my place for me? I got to take it. So they all had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. okay. So the way you train has to be intelligent. So you cannot train to poke them by in the eye, so you're likely not poking somebody in the eye. People say, see, in the middle of the fight, you didn't do this. I can teach you how to hit somebody in the eye. You want to know. To train to hit somebody in the eye where, where you can train is, you do see this palm here like this? Slide your thumb in front of that palm. And you train without that, you have it here, hit to the nose. Get into the nose. That's a terrible palm. Improper. But you can train about this. And then, you know, when danger come, slide that thumb right there. Now just stick to your training with that terrible damn palm and come closer so they can see. When I hit with the palm, I don't know if you can see, it's just touching his eye. Let's see. Look, come around this way. So when I hit with the palm, the structure of the thumb, it touches his eye. 
So that will go in his eye. That's the way you train that. You train it like this, then you bring it forward, and you can hit to the eye if that's just what you want to do. Right. Maybe once they if you got them pinned on the ground on their back, then you might you and and, and now what we do is this. Our palms are like this, right. and we, we do what we call palm sandwiches. And we show so when I go them. right, boom, I come down. Yeah. I'm not aiming at the eye, but he's afraid of it hitting his eye. He starts to turn his head, and that's why I got the advantage. Okay? So, now, what does it have to do with clinching? Your clinching also has to be realistic. Okay. Um, this is clinching in sports. Sport clinch, it doesn't have to be realistic. They swim like this. This is a 50 50 clinch. There are yeah, many. They go like this. You don't know, lose, lose swimming. Right. That, 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 that's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, uh, 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 a Greco Roman wrestler came to my class once. He said, Can, can you, you know, roll with me? Can you do that? I said, Sure. So, we're clinching, and he is being loose. And he is so strong. Greco Roman wrestlers are strong. Yeah. And he already was like six, eight, <laughs> about probably 300 pounds, maybe 8% body fat. I mean, he, and so he, he's doing this so strong. I'm off the ground. <laughs> and he, still, I'm still, you know, coming with me. And, and he's walking with me. I'm off the ground. I said, now, can we, can we do this for real? He said, what you mean? What? We did it for real. I said, no, 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 no. Well, you do it your way. I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> and he's trying to swim. Now, try to swim. Big. Yeah. <laughs> he can't when I'm doing it the right way. Right, and so he's right. like, what in the world? And I got him all over the place. Yeah, he now, he's mine. Yeah, he and so he's like, and I stopped. He said, what day is your class? <laughs> Just like that. What days are your classes? I said, they so and so, so and so, so and so. And I told my student, he won't be back. Why not? Because he's embarrassed. He's embarrassed. He, he really, you know, he's going to embarrass me and, and then play it off. Right. But he's thinking, well, I can't move this little, because I was really skinny then, too. I can't move this little dude. When I first came here, you know, I always tell you, I can bubble out when he came to class. He came from England. All the way to, to see me, to train with me. Right. Yo, and he came to my door. I said, somebody rang by. I said, it must be a, uh, his, his name before he was, I can go with his cover. Now. I said, it must be him. So I go to the door. I open the door. And he's expecting, you know, somebody looking like mm -hmm. Ben Diesel or somebody, right? And we open the door and I was all skinny. He looked, and he'll deny you. He's like, I didn't do that. He, he goes, and at that time, he's 6'4, 6'5. And he was like 260. So he goes like this. Look at him. He's skinny. And he said, I didn't do that. So I said, come on down to the basement. And I, I smiled to myself saying, he, he going to learn today. Right. Mm -hmm. So he comes down to the basement. And we're training. And I bring him right into the fold. And I hold him up. <laughs> and he's like, wow, what in the world? And I said, if you're going to train with me, the first thing I'm going to teach you to do, as big as you are, is to fight small. You're going to fight like a small man. You're going to fight like Kunle. Kunle, uh, you know, you're saying little fella, he's in there too now, right? Kunle is 5'6", and at that time, he probably weighed about 130. If, if you weigh less, you can let us know, Kunle. But I say about five, six, one thirty, and I said you're gonna fight like him, but at your size. We used to call Kunle the wizard. Kunle was so fast, he's in front of you. Next thing you know, he's behind you choking, right? So it's like magic. I said you're gonna be like that, but at your size. And so that's what we got him to. I just right. want, I want people to realize too. If you think about, it, sometimes it's hard if you're not um, training to at a certain level to envision when and where and how you use a technique. So this is the simplest because almost every fight you can think of, if it ain't a boop two piece and drop, they clinch. It. Yeah, they so they're gonna and they freeze in the clinch. Because neither one of them know they're right. doing. So, so on, they on that, on that, what what happened? Yes, and we call that grab ass. Exactly. You don't know what to do. 
a lot of times, you know, y'all boxing, boom, and, and he's he's just pepping me up. Yeah. You, ah, you you grab him because you don't want to get hit. That's what happens. That's a clinch. Y'all are clinch, and y'all get stuck there. Y'all stuck. And, right, and they have to box him. Yeah, and they don't, they don't know what to do. Right, they just hold on. Yeah, they just stuck. Now in tire boxing, they do it on purpose. They know what to do. Yeah, they try to tie you. They they won't. Right. So the first clinch we're gonna work on, of course, is. The simplest is arm clinches. Now these, a lot of times, women get into men. Go, come here. You see in the high school wrestling. Come on, like, girl. They had the right hand fighting. That happens. Um, he grabs the outside of my wrist. First time. First thing I want you to think about: if you're grabbed, if they're touching you, you're touching them. So don't see this as a he's dominating me. If he's touching me, I'm touching him. Too. Just remember that. So we're pretty equal here. You say, what? How? Well, number one, I just turned that into, into grabbing him. I mean, is that something? Is that, this ain't nothing, you know, no tricks to it. You're supposed, you're supposed to learn that when you was about 13, too. Right, right, I mean, exactly. If you ain't learned that, I'm not mad that you ain't went outside enough. So <laughs> the first thing is, and, and, and we've dealt with this before, he grabs to the outside. See the structure for what it is. Two ways to get out of this. One, I can brush the side of my head as I step towards it. So I'm out. Can't hold that. No, it doesn't matter how hard he does it. I just step towards it. The other is to circle my hand mm -hmm. around. The only thing that requires is you have some flexibility. If you don't have flexibility, you just got to move this mug. Move it towards his navel, and your hand easily goes around. Just don't move it out there. That that is stupid. That's going against what you're supposed to be doing. Go again towards his navel. So you move your hand past, like over towards his other arm, and you are there. I can actually go towards his other arm and be out, but mm -hmm. we ain't gonna we gonna out of that didn't happen. <laughs> and so you're right there. So if he grabs both, you could either step towards him, not with both feet. You could. That, that's just weird. <laughs> You can step with one foot, raise both arms up. You're out. Or you circle around. So right now we're going to do, because we, we've done this in another episode. Y'all yeah. can watch the episode. I think it's called Escapes or something like that. But here, I'm bringing the hands towards his center. Towards his center. And then I wrap around and once I grab here, I move my thumbs from here because I don't want him to get dislocated if he starts playing around. I bring him here, the monkey paw. We talked about the C hand to the monkey paw grab. Okay. And then he can do the same. He brings his hands there. And so this is a, what I want y'all to work on for right now. This is the first level of pummeling. Oh, that's nice. So make sure the first thing you do, don't be late, bring him in. Uh. Just no, bring them in. Bring my hands in. Right. Then, and then, right. Oh, that's better. That easy. And then, uh, gotcha. And that is where you go. And now, to make it better and, and more skilled, as I wrap, go towards his elbows. You're not going to get there. Go towards his yeah, elbow. So now that's pushing his arm back too. So that's a, you go in for a dangle towards the elbow. Right. See, and that presses my tight. arm yeah, again. Yeah, it tight. Okay. Uh, good. And if you're not used to the C hand already, you can grab it and then move your elbow. Once you get used to the C hand, just go right into the C hand. And so that's the first level of pump. Okay, we don't call it hand fighting because it's not, you should be more skilled than just a fight. You can do one yeah. at a time. And so as soon as it's touch and go, as soon as he touches me, I go. Right, so that, that's the first level. All right. Okay. That is the first level of pummeling. 
as you do it, try to re- try to relax yourself. I noticed because I ain't done this before like that. My toe, I, my toes was tired. I was squishing my toes. Oh, relax your toes. Relax your toes. Get off your toes. Put your chest down. Relax. Push. Regulate yourself. Breathe. It'll help you. So now I'm moving along, and well, Omni can come in because this happens to women. Usually, a man and not grab like this unless it's by the police. Right. I'm not telling you to do this to the police, but you don't know who it is. I got accosted by a person in plain clothes and they never announced their station. And this exact thing happened like this. He grabbed, I'm, I'm, I'm walking. I got keys, I'm flipping them like this. And he grabs my wrist. Not the key hand. No, no, he grabbed the, he should have grabbed the key hand. <laughs> and this here, the shot across his throat. Mm. And I hauled ass. And the next thing, because I'm thinking this is an attack. Right. By some crazed white man. Right. And he can't say police now anyway. <laughs> and the other police who with him, they come running out of everywhere. Mm. And, um, and police officers, if, if you're watching this show and you couldn't catch me, it's okay. There's a lot of people couldn't catch me. <laughs> I'm a fast dude. And the dude who got hit in his throat, I hope that you know he's better for it and he learned from that. For the detective that caught me, that he nicknamed Penn State, fuck you. <laughs> and that's my real feeling about the dude I hit in the throat. So I, when I went here, and I got it was probably about 30 keys on this thing. I used to practice with that. I just wow. And 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 really it was bad aim. I was trying to hit him in his goddamn <laughs> face, and I hit him in his throat. I really wasn't trying to hit him in his throat. And when he said Thump, like that, I knew I got it. And he went down, and I haul ass just because I was so shocked that he hit his throat. Because I was trying to hit him in his face because that's more humane. Thank you, Larry. And you can believe that or not. So uh, whether I hit him or not, and, and, and yes, James, James from Chicago. You know what it is. Uh, you, you you know how it is, she is. but. He said, "Well, why'd you run if you if, if you didn't know it's police?" Uh, so <laughs> he said it was more than one person. That's why he ran. Right, right. Talking. I figured it was others, yeah, and this is a white man in the neighborhood. It's got to be others wearing uh, tactical boot jeans. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a, a throwback jersey. So he was definitely on something. Mm-hmm. I I had no clue it was the police. Oh, and he had you know. Unlit cigar, which Chicago police love to wear unlit cigars. So in my mind, I thought maybe he is, but he wouldn't have been out there messing with me during that time because I'm just an innocent college boy. In the wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Guess he was in the wrong place. So we hope you're okay with that now. We're, 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 right. <laughs> so if you out there, you know, it, it was no 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 uh, harm, no foul. I didn't mean that to hit you uh, that hard. Happy Saturday, everyone. Happy CBC voter. Happy Saturday to you. Bob, I was wiry. Yes. I was, so I'm six one and a half, right? Almost six two. And at that time, I weighed a hundred. And I was talking about how skinny I was when I can bowl like game. I was 134. That was big for me. You can tell me I wasn't swole. <laughs> my, my normal weight that I, before I moved down here, I was that same height, like six one and a half, uh, 127 to 129 pounds. When I was in college, I was six, about six one, six feet, 115 pounds. So I still thought I was a shit. You can tell me, wow, woo, yeah. But and I was like, you know, I'm, I, I feel good. I'm so light. Sometimes you can be too small, though. I was having a uh, sleep apnea. Because oh, I was on the other end, I wasn't too big, I was too small. Yeah, 6'1, 135. That's like the ass. And that that's was my light, biggest, light. that was big. That's light, light. My military weight now, you couldn't say nothing. I was 6'1, 150. Yeah, well, that's, I was, and that's, who, that's like, it's still barely skinny. there. That's right, barely there. Skinny. That's skinny as so, shit. Damn. And yeah. I seen your, I seen your military because you was skinny as fuck. Skinny as fuck. I'm gonna post my military, uh, one of my military pictures on here. I post both. I post my first one, the basic, how skinny I was. Yeah. And then I post after, uh, I think you've seen the one where I, I have the firearm. I'm 
150 pounds. You can you can say nothing. I was the shit. Can you so, show it? Um, she knows all, Emmanuel Briggs said he knows all topic, but when you're done, could you show an effective use of the shoulder bump? It's funny because did, we did that last. Yes. No, so shoulder bump is positive clinch. Yes, sir. So as a matter of fact, uh, and, and we'll get back to you in a second. When we need to, if I'm in the 50 50 clinch, this is also called over under clinch. Um, I got he got an underhook, I got an overhook, and on the other side. I got an underhook. He got an overhook. So it's 50-50. That's why it's called 50-50. We got the same thing. But I don't want to stay here all day. And we're going to deal with what positions you should be in. You should not end up. You can get here, start here, but you should not end up navel to navel. But I bump him with my shoulder. So from here, he got me tight to him. I'm, I got him tight. That ain't changing nothing with. Let's see, let's see. see, I can still move my shoulder though. Right, I can't. So you stop can't stop moving. that. Even if he lays his head back there, he can't stop that. Still can move it. So I bring my shoulder back. Bump. And after you practice, you get you get that room. And then I didn't, back. I didn't try to get him that room. I know right. he's gonna and do. I know he's gonna do the technique for real. Okay. If the person just is super tight and you're so much weaker than them, they're so much stronger, so much bigger. I don't say you're weaker. They're so much stronger. Then you can still just, yeah, you don't need to move a little bit. I'm only going to move a little. See, that, that's still. About and then from there, boom, I, 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 can, I can hit his liver, I can hit his stroke, I can elbow, I can headbutt, yeah. or I can just turn off. Lock in here. Yes. So you got different stuff that you can do. Okay. Not going back, come back on Nikki. When he grabs her wrist, she's going to go here. So she go, goes in, like almost like you want to clap her hands. She goes in towards me. You can't clap your hands. That's that setting up a rhythm I don't like doing. It. There. Okay. Because there's always rhythm in the fight. It should be broken rhythm in the fight. Mm -hmm. They just set up a rhythm and you break their rhythm. That's what you're going to do. Okay. It's a great They understood that. That's, that's really breaking the rhythm. And that's you see boxers do that a lot. You watch boxing, a good boxer. A boxer has a rhythm. It'd be even his punches go boop, 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 boop. And you see the other boxer, he'll go for the boop, the other boxer interrupt the boop, boop. All right. Well, so you all do this real quick. So if I'm that you're popping to the beat, I would always do do they they pop into the beat like that right now. I'm in between the beat. He in the pocket. <laughs> That's the pocket right there. He in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, before it's time. I'm I'm, I'm I'm while they going on the beat, they look like what the hell going on? I go between it. <laughs> so that you're breaking their rhythm. That's ill. That's ill. So they trying to do so and so. They trying to dance you in between. Right, right. They shit. Right. That's nasty too. Like, what the hell? I'm sorry. We got just another. The same way with punches. He's punching. So we know it's arts that do this chain punching, right? So this is how you do. A student said, "What do you do if they do doing the chain punches?" You know where Artie came from. Probably the class on Nikki. So when they punch it. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. You just join on with it. His rhythm. That's a rhythm. Go. That's a rhythm. I come between the rhythm. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> you can see the punches coming up in your head. So I'm just boom. I'm, I'm, I'm in between his rhythm. And that sends his stuff off. I'm in between the rhythm. And the punch. <laughs> you can't do that with that. It's just, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. But I ain't. Find that out when I was doing that. That rotary punch. <laughs> I just felt stupid. All right, so uh, I'm coming up and I'm grabbing. But you just gonna give me your hands. I like them type of women. Like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know, and you, you know, girl, come, come here, girl. <laughs> so don't test yourself right. Just go right. Exactly. I messed up because I just. Yeah. <laughs> but really, really, it's gonna be this more than anything. Right, and so you do it one one. <laughs> Yeah, no, do, do, do the other one with one hand. Just circle around. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now, 
when they're like this, you practice. After you practice, after a while, you start singing that. Dang. And so you're able to twist with that. And with that, you say, sir, what are you trying to do? You can add your other hand. What are you trying to do, <laughs> sir? <laughs> Because that's why that's you're twisting the throat, right there. It is a throat, because you're twisting the muscle. You can see the veins over the other arm. You can't see them. Yeah, continue. And then take your arm. And so then you're here. <laughs> and I'm not twisting this wrist. That's just me with the muscle. Yeah, muscle of the chain I ain't got. Yo, y'all see that? That's the thing. You nothing, see the, nothing but muscle. Yeah. Ha ha. So. See, it's a, I, I told him I wasn't gonna make no more noises like that. On, on, when he does, when he talk. does that, you go between at between any muscle. There's a nerve because there's an artery. There's a nerve. See, I've been training so long, I can fight that fist. There's an artery there it's on his thumb side. This is the the medial nerve. It runs along the medial <laughs> artery. You've been training as long as me, though. Even when he hit the remedial. Artery. When you, when you hit now, that, if I hit the remedial artery, you got a problem. Yeah. I hit the remedial artery. I can fight that. I can fight that. I can fight that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, <laughs> and I don't like pressure points, except you do it because I'm from Chicago. We wear, sorry about the strap. Mm. We wear big coats. Mm. And so, how you grab it? Oh, that part. But it, it's, it's slamming down on it. That so you slam in this area where that nerve plexus, not a specific nerve. Is that what we do hammers? Exactly. And hammer for us is with this bone to about right here. So you want to hit with the hard bone mm. to do damage or with the pommel of your tool. You don't know hammers are devastating. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's expecting when they like this, for you do boom, boom, and just hit their motherfucker. And that's what happens in clip, clinch. So in clinch, Right there, mm. right. Boom, yeah, boom. I can come with the elbows. So you know they go together. That. Not right there, that. boom. You, you may be expecting this. Right, I'm expecting the uppercut to come. Right, then you you could drive your hand, keep your hand there. That ain't gonna do nothing. I'm it's gonna hurt, but it, is, it ain't bad. But this, boom. Oh, and the and the side right, that jawline, and then his head turned deep. Oh, you give him right there. Make him eat. So, You'll be full of shit. After so after you've done this, what do you do? You've gone here. I know. And now you can, a couple things, you can pull into knee. Remember we punch with the knee? You got, um, you got Amanika's favorite to pull in neck break. Yes. So, well, we don't want to kill them. All right. That's Amanika's so favorite. So you, you pull and see how he bent. That's and a, that's what I'm doing thing. is, so I just cradle this in here. You can do this. You just cradle his head in the bend of your elbow, and you come over to help. And just kind of crank it a little bit. You can do that. Now, here mm. is when you get into deadly territory, where both hands are here, and then I hump up to the sky. Don't hump, bro. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hump you. No, I'm just kidding. But so, <laughs> see, so he's tapping already. I didn't get the hump on. I ain't get the hump. And so, because it's three parts, so you hump up to the sky. But then you hump up to the sky and you push your hip towards him. <laughs> now that's really bad. <laughs> he ain't get to do that in so long. Yeah, you put that's where it's <laughs> really bad. So once again, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, but that's, that's but here. Pull him. That's it. And he's caught there. And so once he's caught there, now I can use the other hand or just that hand to mm. rake. So once I I rake, if I put this on the on his back, mm. his mm. neck's mm. in a bad position. Mm. His back. If I don't want to damage his neck, come forward. Mm. I don't put this on his back. I just turn with this <laughs> as I go, and then he'll it'll hurt, but he'll break fall. his neck. He'll just fall. Right. Look. But you leave it on his back, he can't fall. What was that nerve Denzel squeezed on the Italian punk's hand? Okay, that's this nerve. Make him shit that double chip. Be, be careful. So that's this nerve here. People use that nerve to um, cure headaches too. You so cure, I, but but if you're pregnant, yeah, don't even yeah, play with this nerve. You yeah. can cause a, uh, an abortion. You probably shouldn't have told him that. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> to abort women, but that. 
Yeah. And so when you're pregnant and your man grabs you here, you've been watching the show and right, right. he's a bastard. Take him out. But I so it's that. this it's this nerve here. Now I'm a I'm gonna squeeze it enough. She's just gonna shit his pants a little bit. Just a little, just a little poo-poo. So, a little poo-poo. <laughs> you, know, you didn't hear that little part. Yeah, right. You know I mean? <laughs> no, I, I would never that squeeze like that bad. I use this a lot. I used to use it a lot for my headaches. Yeah, yeah, for your headache. So, now you just can't do it too hard though. You will mess yourself up. To train it. Don't put the, the, the tip here. Damn, I got it. Damn, I got it. But put your the ball, the the joint right there in there, and it goes in between. So mm. in between there. I don't know about that. And then let you, you, you got it. Unless you unless you practice that. Okay. You got it. Got it. It's not directly in here. It's along this finger, kind of in between there. And you push forward. And down to that thing. It's amazing how you be getting that shit. So that's that's the nerve that he pinched. I just want to say one time, we trains. Let's get crazy, but we used to train that so much that pulling up, pulling down, grabbing the head, or coming around cradling like this. I did that so many times that when I was, I was afraid. I don't know if you remember. Remember, I was afraid. I was doing uh, when I was working at the uh, flame. I was afraid. That I was gonna break somebody's neck. Because the first thing motherfucker could do is you know throw this shit up. And we was training it right out of there. As soon as you put your hands up, we snatch you right, forward. So it's here. That same thing is snatch you forward. Yep. I can go here, but as long as your body go pull, I'm, I got you here. That was the quick kill. And and, <laughs> and the most is quick and fast. Yes, yeah, quick and fast. And, so. and we go. Here, like I said, that Woo! and you can walk a person out like that. You say, Look, sir, and all you do is I'm I'm punching my fists up towards the sky. You say, Sir, walk. You say, No, walk. Mm-hmm. And you start walking. <laughs> this is a little bit. And if I say, So I said walk, you go in there, well, he's, he's jammed up. Bad. So Woo. that that's a clinch. <laughs> that, that is a clinch. So remember, clinch grabs. The neck is considered a lamp. It's so it can work for a toothache also. Yeah, it works for a toothache too, yes. So from here, you can pull here, you can pull, attack the neck, you can pull. Mm. I'll be careful because once with the head coming down, you let go and you boom, drive the elbow up. I don't know. Ooh, I love you can do that. Or he grabs, you can pull and get the head <laughs> out of there. <laughs> Okay. Even not jump to the ground. You, you really pull them down and you get gone. Okay? That's a good one. The other, if I lift here, this causes, you're going to be in a physical engagement. Yeah, you hit it up. <laughs> now, once I lift, boom. I'm, I mean, that, this is when you don't mind being hands on. Okay? Now, here, boom. I, if I go here with this hammer, we're going to be open hand. I push against his hip, I push against his neck, and now I get on again. Mm, that was nice. Okay. You really see that this way? Oh, okay. So, uh, do the. Oh, okay. Grab. Okay. So I'm here. Bang. Bang. And then this hits here. And this, this is here, gets his neck. Push. I'm going to push you hard. I'm going to yeah, yeah. into that. So, boom, you push away, and then you get gone. Nice. Okay? So you can do that. That's against the wrist grab. Another part of if my wrist is grabbed, you're a little bit, you've, you've been watching world class for four or three years, you, you know, you got a little bit of skill, and then you, you can now go to the middle and grab his wrist over here. I grabbed his wrist. Grab that wrist so you can see that. I grab that wrist, and now I just take a step towards him and turn. I got him. That's a clinch. Once again, remember, he's grabbing me. He's touching me. I'm touching him. So I got it. I'm already touching him. I, I'm in control. He just doesn't know it because he thinks because he's out there, he's in control. Work this with your family, too. You say, well, I can't get the hand off. You can if, if they that strong, just turn your palms to the ground. Okay. I can't hold that. Squeeze hard. Use your thumbs too. 
Shit. Squeeze it. Oh, y'all, I'm about to can break you, my, my you wrist balls. Can you finish I can't. No, nah, they're numb and swelling. Oh, my goodness. So you hear? You turn that car to the ground. You're out. He did it slow. He could have did it fast. And you're just going to hurt yourself if you try to grab really hard. You right. You're going to hurt your thumb. You can't do it. I'm just about to do it. I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> and that's what you're doing. You grab into his tricep, uh, into his bicep. Your fingers should hook over. The palm that his tricep make your fingers hook over to his bicep. This grabs his wrist. I place my head here in the back of his shoulder so I can't get, he can't get no punches on really. If he does, they're going to be very weak punches from him. Right. It's not really effective. And I'm assuming he's not moving me because I'm going to be getting moved. Right, I'm going to be getting moved. I'm not going to just stand here and say, sir, you shouldn't have done that to me. You shouldn't have grabbed me. Right. So I am now using this shoulder and my foot that's close to him to move him right. where I want him to go. Okay, I can move him and then take off. I can throw him, basically. That's one of the keys why I'm not getting to get shit off. I can't. I can't. And, and, now, and then I can take off. Or I can keep moving him in a circle where he can never get a punch off. Why? I don't want to be circling all day. Right. Well, he can circle me until he pull. <laughs> right. Well, until I yank that elbow. One of the eight more of them. So, once again, grab it so you can see here. And now, as I step towards him, palm goes down. And I grab his bicep I'm here. And now I take a step forward. See, I'm in control here. With me all around, throw me into a building. I can throw, throw, throw up out the window, window down right? Down the exactly. stairs. Slam your head into a wall. I'm bad. Push me into the other person that's trying to get to me. I mean, just trying to get to him. I'm going to bury you like right. that for a second. So you got a lot you can do there. Now, let's say, somebody say, well, they grab your elbow. What you? Well, he, and he's above my elbow. He's smart. Oh, my fault. That's not to me. <laughs> How do you know but, but, not no, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's good. That. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm grabbed there like, damn, he really. Hey, buddy. And this buddy. Is how, you know how you're right. not grabbing your head, buddy. Hey, buddy. Out. You know, what you think you're doing here? Well, now that comes around there. This is not good. Ooh, he can pull my tool. Once I'm oh, around, I could have I could have pulled this tool out of here. That's nasty. Under, sir. But I just go right here. Mm. Once I come up under this elbow, now I, I say, sir, get away from me. And that, so this is up, and I'm pushing them away. Get oh, away. Exactly. That's locked. Oh. Now, here, I can pull. Come back. I'm in pull. Bad shape. Come back. Pull. Come back. It's coming back. And putting the pain it's on the pain shoulder. Is, I can't. I'm never going to get it's that there. up. I'm hurt. I'm hurting. And then you get hit in the face. Oh, and, then and, I'm and, hurting. And then he tries to punch me again. I just bring this up. Hurting. Yeah, boom. Escape pain. Boom. I, can't, I want to give him pleasure. But that pain. And I'm just saying, sir, I'm all tapped. You got me, sir. What are you doing? Let me go, sir. Right. If he's in the thing. Sir, let me place. go. I mean, this guy's screaming. Let me go. This guy's grabbing me. <laughs> pushing me, kicking me. Leave me alone. Sir, leave me alone. And if I push his head, and oh, I got to leave me alone, this sir. Is bad. Bad. And so you keep that, you get boom. Keep jamming it. Boom. Keep jamming it into his liver. That's his liver here. He got, he got a free hand. I don't have a free hand. And I pull my tool. I don't like that shit. I don't <laughs> like that shit. I don't like that boy. And so, since he don't like it, he just muscled his way out. Yeah, but that <laughs> that go out. Work. I thought he was about to let me get out. <laughs> no, sir. So, Man. that's how that works. Yank the If he grabbed the elbow, the elbow would be the, the worst for him. Oh, so, yeah, I didn't grab it. So, this is what they really do. Oh, so that's getting you deeper. Oh, goodness gracious. I don't want that. Yeah. So. Ooh, don't grab nobody's elbow, y'all. Nah, don't he grab grabs the shoulder. Elbow. He grabs the shoulder. Hey, buddy. And you see this a lot. And, yeah, buddy. And yeah. Same thing. You just go here. Oh, get it. Here. If his arm is straight. Hey. Hey, pal. Hey. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Go over, but if you ain't got long arms, it ain't gonna work. When you use your hip, you just go towards it mm -hmm. and get you out of there. See, I'm out now. I, I they might I, I have clutch your pearls. <laughs> I shocked you would do that. This jacks me up. And now you take him around, and now you can get him out of there. But so, so, another so. thing you can do if he puts his hand on you straight like that, I can just go here and that's a clutch there and snap his elbow. Oh, Lord. Or I, ain't gonna be happy. I say, man, 
I was going to the store, sir. I don't care where you were going, baby. I don't want the store over here. <laughs> <laughs> so just the store over here. Wow. I can do that. Me, what, what, what would I do? It would be that. He going to give you the pen. Oh. I know a bottle would Oh, boy. He gave you that. He wants you to. So I'm going to. Under. I'm not going to. <laughs> so if you grab and, and your job happened to be straight, that was foolish. You see, you see, so what he did, he destroyed the delivery system that was, and, that was and handed to him. And destroyed his wrist. Right. Because it was touching my shoulder. So all that's destroyed. So I boom, hit that, or you can boom, just slap it. Slap it up. Boom. And now you slide down to it. Delivery turn system it over. Gone. Now he's in a position of dominance. <laughs> and now I'm on the ground. I'm off of you. There's all kinds of stuff you can do here. I'm afraid. He's <laughs> he's here. This, so this I is... just want him down, sir. That that was it was that Ooh. easy. And then I stomp it. That's when you I don't usually worry, but if I'm in that position at that time, I'm gonna do a little worry about that. So if you're <laughs> in this position, be late. All right. Maybe the rest of you can't do this. You're in this position, you say screw it, and you bring your, your baby finger to your towards your ear. Screw it! And just snap it, and then you fight. So you snap your own. You snap your own ear. <laughs> you think you're doing something to me? I'm gonna train that after the show. I don't want to see that. That's the you picture I train. And then I grab your, your knee. You, you suck on, you snap your own knee. No, you bad. You think you're doing something? <laughs> if, if he did that all that, I would leave him alone. Like, okay, sir. That was gonna take a lot of cocaine, a lot of cocaine. I don't got it. So, man, don't grab nobody. Like don't. That's why you. Hey, this is another lesson. Don't this, this, you like don't this. do this. You don't do this. If you're gonna grab their shoulder, you might as well grab collar tie behind their neck. He just talked about this. this is why you don't put your hands on people unless the intent is what it is. You out here? That's that bullshit intent right, right there. You Look at because he's trying to intimidate. Look at bro. That's that bullshit. <laughs> you, you can say that without touching that man. Right. Just look at bro. Shit look at bro. Pow! You ain't looking no more. That's bad news, man. So this what, is what I'm looking at. Away. What I'm looking at. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Or, or he he goes look here, bro, at it like that. Oh yeah. Put him to his knees. Pull a tool. It's also, what am I looking at, sir? This is embarrassing too. Right. Oh, you. What am I to, looking at? You trying to be be funny, be fancy? <laughs> <laughs> right. I hope the right people watching this today. Because some of y'all touchy-feely and you ain't really trying to feel what and you're doing. Once, once he's down here, just so you know, and only you can, this is for you, grab the ear. <laughs> say, what are you trying to do, sir? Look down at the ground, sir. Don't look at me. Look at the ground, now, sir. Now, for me, I'd have to kill this person. <laughs> they grab my ear. I they grab my ear, they got to kill now, look, at, look at the ground, sir. You oh, can make it just keep looking at <laughs> You can't do that. You grab my ears, you better kill me. Say, you know, call, me, call, me, call me master, sir. Oh, Lord. You don't look your master in your eyes, sir. Now, if you do that, you you want a fight. You want something? You want to fight. <laughs> you want if I do that to you, I really want you to fight me, <laughs> so I can go ahead and send you home. You tried to get more out of it, dude. Yeah, exactly. He is so hemmed up. I'm surprised. I've never seen that before. Oh, let me just well, say, I, I manifest it. If you come to this club, <laughs> I guarantee you the type of hemmed up that you will see. Yourself in and then you probably that you've never seen before. Trust me. I see it. I've been 10 years. I see shit all the time. I ain't never seen before. It's it's just and, and, and we just laugh because a lot of stuff is ridiculous. They they ask, was it you? Somebody asked me the question, what if they have the knife to your neck? How do, I think it's Ogunle Wa. How do I stop it? It was to my neck. I said, well, you, you know, you just put your chin down and you chin, you take it from him. I said, that is the most ridiculous question ever. You're in trouble. Oh, like my man rolling. Did he was he rolling the knife off his yeah, chest? And, and the student <laughs> rolling, the student go flying over. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So now, next clinch. Right. How many of you gonna give me? I know your voices. You came all the way here and stuff. Even though your voice is jacked up, so we appreciate it. We definitely do appreciate it. I'm serious about that. Next is 50-50. Well, actually, let's do Colin Elbow, because I don't know if we've done. Collar and elbow. And this is the picture that you see right. on the cover here. This is called collar and elbow. So he has a collar tie on me. He's got his hand hooked to my the back of my neck. He's got his elbow in my chest. Okay. I'm grabbing that elbow like shit. I gotta control that. Because if not, I'm gonna get taken all over the place. And then I grab his the same way. I put my head down. 
So I'm not getting punched. He puts his head down. Because, of course, I could. Now, this here, you can control with your elbow. I try to punch him with the control. But if he didn't grab this arm, I could throw elbows. I can do all kinds of stuff. This is stopping that. And my head's over here, so he really don't got no punches or nothing anyway. Yeah, but he, I know it's an attack the body. So from here, this is really bad. You really only going to get put in this by somebody that really is trained. Mm -hmm. The police didn't grab mud and put him in this. This would be crazy. Like, Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. I'd be laughing because this would, I know how it would look to other people. Even, uh, even a wrestler, uh, a wrestler ain't going to, they, they may do this too. A wrestler may do this too. There's something different coming out of it. But the rest of the world right. too. And on the street, most people they do they like this. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And even if a wrestler do it, they're gonna be loose. They ain't gonna be right, like, right, 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 tight, tight. What if somebody be tight with you like this, you got bad. Things. Even if you watch professional wrestling, they'll go right. They Hur! Hur! But they still way away yeah, from got all this room for this is this is what's happening. That's different. So from here, this could be really bad for you or really good for you if you know what you're doing. So you say, Well, how do I get out of that? Well, first, I want to show you what to use it for. So mainly you use it for snap downs. Snap his head down. Mm -hmm. Come around this way so you can see. Once I snap his head down, now it's under my arm, and then I can affect a guillotine choke or different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main things it's for. Uh, when I go to try to get under hooks or, or both hands at his throat, he goes under two. Excuse me, I'm not going to beat you in I go up here, I'm trying to get his neck with both hands, he goes up there. So now we're on this side. I go, I'm trying to get his neck with both my hands, he stops that like that. And that's pummeling. I don't want to pummel all day. With him here. So, number one, I showed you snap down. I don't want to get snapped down because once he gets me under there, he's going to choke the hell out. I don't want to get snapped down. So, I want to get out. So, the way you get out, you want to look the other way. I'm, I'm this way. Uh, you can do it because. They'll see you looking at them. So I got my hand around his neck. He's going to look the other, just look towards y'all, the camera. And and not if he moves his foot, the the foot in the direct, that's close to the direction he's moving. He's and now he's out. I don't have it no more. See? That's how you get out of it. So once again, this one here. I'm gonna do this. Look, and, and that's scraping against my face, by the way. His head is scraping against my face, so I'm like, ow, ow. And, and, and so now he takes that step out, and I, I don't, and I'm off balance. He's free, okay? So that's how you get out. I do it on my side so they can see the back way around. I guess it be. So you see here, I mean, you can hold this real quick. Now, on the street, I wouldn't care about my glasses flying off, but it's going to fly out now. You look. As I'm going, this scrapes against him. I'm looking that way. Now, this foot that's closer to the direction, I'm looking to my left, so my left foot steps out. And I'm out now. You leave him. You can see it. From and then I would reach under, grab, I got his arm, or I would just throw an elbow, boom, and get about there. Like that. So that's how the Colin elbow works. That's not usually used, but you can end up getting in there. You find a top person, they're going to get you in there. And they want to get you ultimately like this. This to us is a no break on tie. This is not a good clinch with hand on here, but I mean, they, they can need you. It's bad for you. Mm -hmm. But there's too much room there. The way we do it is we clap. So one hand palm up to the sky, the other one palm down towards the ground. 
we clap hands, and now I squeeze my elbows together. This is much tighter. I squeeze my elbows together. We call yeah, this yeah. an ultimate clinch. Jesus, ah. The reason why we call it ultimate, I can do this against your arm, I can do this against your leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it hurts and it's still effective. The winner has one name. The winner has one name, exactly. Don't, 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 don't clinch it last week. So you go here and close. Tight. He, he, yeah, that's tight. That's and, and from there, now I throw knees, boom, knee, boom. I step back. Can you put that down on me? So I step back, and now I look towards my foot, and I turn him, bring that up. I turn him, as I'm bringing him down, I turn towards that foot, and he goes down. He came down with that knee on my chest. Brought the knee on him, uh, kept this up, and finished him here, or slammed his head into the ground. So this is a clinch, too. A clinch you don't want to call it. ultimate clinch. Okay. So that is a clinch. This is a clinch. If he doesn't know how to pummel, I get in, I got him. And that's what he wants. And that's what I want to do. And that's why he want to stop it. That's why I'm going, he's doing there too. Like, she <laughs> and he tried to do it to me. I say, she <laughs> Exactly. Right? Because you don't want to be caught in that. Okay? Now, the most common clinch, the one you most of the time get into, Person punching, you trying to stop him. That's right, it. Yeah, ah, it's a 50 50. Maybe a bad 50 50, but it's 50 50. Once you're in this 50 50 position, here, you can also pummel from here because what I'm trying to do is get this double underhook. And so I go, he's going on the other side, and we'll show you. And so now we're 50 50 on the other side. He goes to try to get me, I'm going. And now we're 50 50. So, how do you do this? You don't want to be doing this shit all day, plumbing. Well, what you do is your underhook side. That's what you move. You don't move the overhook side trying to snake under. He going to snake. But I'm going to show him like this. this is what so, when I snake, he snakes. He knows to do that. So, I'm not doing that. Mm. What I'm going to do, two things I can do. I either can, <coughs> this hand here, even though he got his hand on my tricep, he doesn't stop the hinge really. Mm. As long as I use my hip, I come mm. down and I put this on the side of his leg. I still got his arm. I pull and I bring him down. That's that's one easy way. I'll do that one more time. That was so nice. So we're here. We're pummeling. Mm. I say, damn this. <laughs> and I bring him down. Okay? Yeah, I love that. love this. That's one way to deal with it. The other way, one, one way, it's the other way, <laughs> is once again, he's got he's got me this way. Well, he's, he's really pulling me that way. So I go that way. I go mm, up. Once, that I, once, once I go up, grab Once I go up, I step the same leg is on that side. I step over, I move my head around him. And now I'm up here. Mm. Once I'm up here, this is where I want to be. You've seen this before. <sighs> That's where I want to be. <sighs> is this a half quarter crucifix? Crucifix? What is it? No, so this is this is a, 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 a under uh, 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 That's terrible. Uh, uh, underhook. There's just an underhook. Okay. It's underhook. It's just a high underhook. And that's what I want. So I'm going to do it again. How do I get there? Um, from here, I slide up. Mm. At the same time, I can pull down on this arm that I got here to distract him. I'm going to do this with this. So I can pull down on this arm that I'm overhooking. And I underhook. I bring this up. Just make sure you don't get bumped into the head or each other. Bring that up. Once I bring that up, nice. the same foot on the right side. It steps out. I bring my head around. Now, I can come all the way around and catch him in a choke if I want. But what's that choke called, Joyce? No, no, no. Mm, no. This is a head. No, this is a, a triangle choke. Triangle. Oh, John. John. Terminology, right? So when I come around, this this hand is up high, right? It come on top of his shoulder.
is we are back in business, back in business. And now I'm going to keep this one up. Y'all hear us now? All right, good. So, we, we've done 50 50. Once again, you get around to this side. You come up as you pull down, you step over, and you're here. Now, when I knee, bing. I step under his nose. I don't have to push him. He goes him. over. That's science. I just step beyond his nose and he goes over. I'm not pushing him or doing none of that. That is another way. So remember, you have that way. And you also have, I come down in this way. So this, I'm coming down to his leg. Slide down to his leg. You can slap it there or you can slide down his leg. I like to slide down because it's making him feel our balance already. I pull his yeah. arm, he goes down. And you can mess your knee up and twist your ankle on that one too. If right. you held me in place long enough, that's gonna mess me up. So that is how you deal with 50 50, which is most common once again. You're getting punched. Shit. Oh shit. Ah. And you're here. Yep. Happened a lot. Well, you can immediately the other way, I'm on this side, but I don't want to walk all the way over. Oh uh oh, no sound again. Hmm. No sound again. Sound sound is good. Yeah, sound is good on my end. Okay. okay. Woo. So another thing that you can do is if you don't want to work your way all the way over there, is you can just slide under here and collect your pearls. So I'm sliding under. You see, I'm doing this. Now I'm going to come around so you can see. I clutch my pearls. And now I got his arm there. Oh, that was serious. And so people say, well, what you going to do from there? You're so deep. What I do is I put the back of my thigh to the front of his thigh. Yep. And then I step over and he goes down oh, there. I thought you were going to do Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Nah. I like this the walk over. He said the simple stuff will last, so we won't do it quick. And he goes down. <laughs> or I had him like this. Remember, we were here. I slid under. I slid my hand that's grabbing his tricep. I slid it to my lap, basically. And I come around, let it slide back to my chest. So I got him here. Okay. And so I can do that there. Or because I got him like this, I can whip him over, step back, step back. I put my thigh in front of his thigh, and then I turn this way. He goes, he's about to go over. Simple. Thigh to his thigh, it is a fulcrum throw, but this is called a whiz, whiz over. And then I can run or stomp him. Okay? So all I did was caught it there, turn. Very simple movements, very small movements. That's with that 50-50. There's a lot more I can do. I can pull tools, a lot that you can do. That's all I was about to say. Y'all can when y'all train this, you'll see the nuggets where your hands be at. When you come in, when you every time you around me like that, you grab this tool. Come around my back, you grab the tool. So you'll see the opportunities training. That's all I can say. Uh the final clinch we're gonna deal with is this one here sucks. He grabs my neck. And we dealt with that before. Yeah. Where he's not usually going to grab in the middle of the floor. But this could be I usually a person they grab a you know him and they're making a emotional point. Mm -hmm. And I kill you. So and so so and so. If you're in a club or on the street and they do this, they're trying to push you into an object. That's the danger. I was gonna say the danger is them doing it. Ain't you, you ain't getting choked, you're getting pushed backwards. Right. Falling to hit the Cause, something. Or once you go backwards, then now they, they pull the tool and you're stuck. So you put it, put one hand, keep me against the wall, and then stab me. That's bad. So I don't want him to put me nowhere. So I step my he's pushing, I put my foot back to stop that. And then I'm gonna show you two things. 
One, your hands come up. We've shown you this before. They, and I turn to bring my arm over. Oh, let go. Let go. Right, it will lock his wrist up. So he's going to let go. I don't care how emotional he is. Yeah. And now from there, boom, right? Boom. So those can go, or you can just get gone. You can run. The other way is what I normally do. He, he, so he's going, he's pushing. I stop him. I knew he was what you doing, man? <laughs> what, what's up? Because that's, that's, that's emasculating right there. Right. What the fuck he just put his pinky in my goddamn back? So, you got to think about that. Why you thinking yeah. you getting fucked up? Like, oh, oh. And that's really what I'm doing here. I'm going for my tool. Like, right. right into some wrong thing. And now grab his neck to see what Because that's another thing. You put somebody away, it's their nature is to come back. Right. And then you make and sure they ego too. You make sure they come back to the right thing. You put them, I stop them. Stop that. Yeah. The tool is there. Right. I just run right into it. I'll be like, whoop, whoop, boom. Say, so, so I'm sorry. I was trying to show you my new knife so we can be friends. You leave the knife in him and you put his hands around it and run. Right. <laughs> Let him hold it. Right. Right. Put this hand and uh, take my napkin. Let <laughs> <laughs> it go. What about if they far away and got Don Jones teach them how to escape that hole? Okay, Miss Bitch, Holy Bitch Queen. <laughs> What about if they are far away and got yeah, Don Jones. Jones teach them how to escape that hole? Because they're far, they're far away. Okay. So I one, you can't get no hold. I can't get no hold. Right. And uh, <laughs> so that that's what happened to to the student Don Jones. He's gone. He still gets touched. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He gets touched. <laughs> you walk into a house and so your your door is kicked open. The first thing speaking should not be you talking about anybody there? <laughs> Somebody in here. Right. The first thing is this goes in first. And if you see somebody, it speaks. Right. <laughs> it speaks. It barks. It says, hey. Right. Hey, hey. Right. Somebody came to my house. I, I, anybody here? I ain't about to say, yeah, I'm upstairs. What you doing? Do what I know. We were doing the Bible class together in the, in the class. He teaches somebody come in your house. You say, "Hey, I'm armed." I said, no, you do not. Why do not do that. Don't do that. And they know where you at. I said, "You're saying you're armed." I said, "Let's let's, let's experiment." So I came down. I said, "Hide wherever you want." Let me know. And I said, yeah, I'm about to steal all this shit. He said, "I am armed." I said, "Oh shit." He think I'm gonna run. Oh shit. I got quiet. So he, he I hear him looking like where the fuck am I at? Creeping down. And yes, he turns the corner. Bop bop. Because you gave up your position. You don't know, know. something that don't exist, but you know, the more you know, you don't do that. You don't you don't get on social media with your guns and with your with your, your children and they got guns and i taught that and this fool was an attorney in front of your house he's an attorney so he's supposed to have some intelligence right he said he gets his gun and he's stroking it i'm like well you, you know he overcomes right, so. i love my gun i love my gun first i'm like who is saying who the brother did them sounding like that i love my gun that's why i bought all these guns and I buy my cane corso, and I buy everything. You go to try to look tough. Exactly. And Seriously. if you see him now, he did not look. Didn't look tough then. Mm. Uh, but everything's a show with these folks, mm -hmm. and don't be a show. <clears throat> show. Right. Yeah. Show. Don't tell. Don't be a cause. You ain't even being a show. You're being a teller. You're telling. You're telling people bullshit. You're still telling. Right. I would not tell people I, I know anything about martial arts. I wasn't trying to get them into it when we're doing this podcast. Other than that, I don't go around. Like, I hey, I know this. I don't walk around with our school shirt on. Right. And I learned. I had a martial art magazine on the train. Ain't nobody paying no attention. Just humongous. It's always the humongous brothers that, that's just nutty as hell. Why can't it be the little scrawny no, brothers that's nutty as hell? It's got to be a big giant. That's crazy because you want it makes you want to pick at them so they can fight you. Right, right. <laughs> so he sat down next to me. Bro, he sits down and 
my first thought is, even if he has a big booty, because his head is way up here over mine, and maybe his booty pushing him up, or he is huge. And he was huge. I don't, I don't think he had a big booty. I don't know he had his loose pants on, but he was huge. So I'm like, damn. And I should have put the book up then. Mm. But he don't look like he cared about me as big as he is. I'm like, he may not even notice me. I don't know if it's a, it's a ant crawling by on the train. So he probably not notice it. So I'm just reading. You do watch watch. Oh, yeah. We're in the seat. Yeah. I said, mm -hmm. I said uh, a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I bet you know that. But boy, I bet if I just spit in your face, you wouldn't bet do nothing about it. I said, well, please don't spit in my face. He said, I go on my pad, I pull out some shit and throw it in your face. I said, first of all, if you shit yourself on mm -hmm. here, that's nasty and I ask you to move. Mm -hmm. But if you go in your pants, sir, and you grab shit and throw it in my face, you're going to learn how much I know. Mm -hmm. Learn how much I know. So then I do put the thing up, the magazine up, and I grab something else. I put this, mom, I'm like this. And I got a tool in my hand. Mm. But I'm like, I have to kill him. Mm -hmm. I can't just smack him around and make an example. This pure dude, be like, man, I'm going to grab him. I'm going to grab him. See, I'm going to put it in your face then. I said, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I got to have to be honest with you. I'm going to win. You put feces in my face, I'm going to kill you on this train, sir. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking like that. He's like, look at people. Mm -hmm. like, this little nigga crazy. Out. He said, oh, boy, you ain't going to do dog gone. He had the sense to get up. Though. And that relief you said when the dude that you were going to fight said, oh. <laughs> as trained as I am, I said, oh, you want to kill somebody. Be happy. I want, and I don't want to, if I got a good shot, I'm yeah. pretty trained, but if I stab him and you don't feel it, the way he look. Oh, oh, you stabbed me. Oh, did he take it out and start doing it? Did he put the dirt out of his nail? No, no, no. I can also run, so I'm going to be all in hands. <laughs> you know, with no shame. What about the slick one that put one hand in the back and put one hand on your shoulder? How to get out with one shoulder? Okay, Miss Bitch, uh, Holy Bitch Queen. I hate using that term. If that's the view of woman, sister, uh, ma'am, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not using this bitch. Anyway, if the person has their hand around their back, he's not putting one hand on my shoulder. It's not happening. You see someone like this right here? They got the right. hand back. That's when I get to this point. To be honest. <laughs> and and just so what's you your, know, so, so, so what's your motherfucking problem? What's your, what's your problem, boy? <laughs> now that just so you know. No, what about the slick ones that put one hand in the back and put one hand on your shoulder? Oh, like he got a gun in my back? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we So if he got, one I'm gonna tell you what. He got one now, one hand like you got, a, like you got a gun or something. Is that what you mean? If it's like that, because you said slick. If she has a hand like that, either way, either way, I'm gonna tell you what has happened is I failed. I have failed in my. Situational yeah. awareness. Nobody should be behind you putting hands. Nobody on. should be getting that close behind me putting their hands on. Now we're human beings, so we're not infallible. That can happen, but it's rare for people that train because you have a certain level of awareness. But he puts his hand on me, on my shoulder. There, I'm moving. Then, right. my concern is even what he's gonna put in my back because he could have some pointing at my head. He'd be smarter not to put it in my back. Right, you'd be, you'd be smart enough. I can touch it. But right, I don't. He'd be smart enough to even touch this. He just shoots me from behind. I can't stop <laughs> that. I mean, damn. I always tell people, we train for the things, and 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 we pray also. So the Arisha that we deal with handle the things we can't handle, not the things you won't handle. Mm -hmm. So everything else I handle, but certain shit I can't handle. I got to rely on spirit. And if spirit don't come through for me, I'm just screwed. So if he puts his hand on me, True. he puts his hand on me, I'm moving now. That's number one. 
a hand on me, I realize I screwed up. I don't care if it's a friend. I don't I don't know it. He's behind me. Once he puts this, I don't care if it's the police. I don't know who the fuck it is. Once that hand touches me, I'm moving. And now I can assess who it is. Right. I was in a restaurant with another student that grabbed on the arm like that, but with both hands, grabbed like that, like this, by a fool. Right. Who is a influencer now on the internet? Okay. You know what? He has to hear this if you ever watch the show because you took I'm sure he's watching the show. <laughs> you, you've given him given this one a few times. And I just went. Like this, mm-hmm. reach under, pull him to me, and was about to hit him in his stroke. And he, because he knew he was done. And I said, What? <laughs> Ever. This is a grown ass man who's like six, five, six, six. Don't you ever do that? He just laid his hand here in my shoulder mm-hmm. and cried like a baby. And I just patted him while he cried. And then in Sultan, he gets up and said, Man, if it was. Baba Taji Nanshi, I'd be dead. I'm like, well, you know, I love Taji Nanshi, but I have been training longer, and Taji Nanshi not always on. I, I, well, I ain't going to say that, because I don't want people to get, oh, I'm get Taji Nanshi. <laughs> he, 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 he's formidable even when he's not on. I'm always on. I'm formidable without him, but I'm always on. So, I, I said, okay. He, I said, did you hear this fool? After he crying in my shoulder, then he got to throw in a jab or something. Like, I care. I don't have no beef with Baba Tati Nani. He said, I don't, I, maybe Baba Tati Nani would have killed him. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I don't think that's Baba Tati Nani steal over here. He's talking about the ego. I, I was on set um, trying to stay awake and stand up. So I go around the corner there. I didn't think about it. See me. And I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm just slipping. And so I'm really arrow stepping. You know what I'm saying? And Ralph stepping, and I go back around the corner, and I, I guess the guy must have peeked around the corner. It's food. I see him. He is real. <laughs> like, don't you think I can real? I can see that you making up some shit. Well, he's like he's doing Wing Chun Sung Kim Chow. No, I'm not even doing Wing Chun. And then I said Sung Kim Chow. I'm not even doing Wing Chun. People like this motherfucker was making up some shit. That's the ego. Well, you like still them, still them chow. Isn't that, isn't that it, y'all? Still them chow for them. So they go like this. <laughs> yeah, then they do something else. We agree to win some people on about the please. We agree That's pretty good, eh? <laughs> See? Yeah. Then it's something else. Shoot! Shoot! Yeah! Yeah, I didn't know I did. Oh, okay. So, so boom. <laughs> what else now? I'm going to get it. So, what else to do? She would not be a part of this. Heat. Ha! Heat! Yeah, you weren't ready. You weren't ready. But, poop, poop, poop. That's the second That's the second form. Y'all ain't ready for it. Don't, do the, the thoughts and expressions here displayed by Valdez and Tati are not those of the Warriors Class podcast. No, y'all. Uh, no, I, I, I love all martial arts. So, I'm just kidding with you. Don't let your ego get in the way of the training or in the way of how you Yeah, now that, that the dude in the mirror because he sees them. Yeah. You want in competition tissue with this fool. That's, so the, that's the ego it's, right it's there. It's silly, man. And we, we are on that. Yeah. So, like you probably said, the, the main thing about this, man, train it so you know it. So if you have to do it, you do it well. You do it right. You do it efficiently. And so your clinches. Uh, remember, somebody grabbed I'm, I'm talking, he grabs my wrist. It should just be simple. So do it, train it to this instinctive. Right? Because he's doing the other one, right? So I had to switch. And that stop. <laughs> so train it so it's instinctive so you know what to do. And you can flow off of it. Yeah. Read. Watch it. Train, beloved. <laughs> we got to get a video like that. He got a uh, hiring saying read. Yeah. Read, beloved. Sure. You gotta get trained, beloved. You do. With you, with you as the lamb. Yeah, yeah. Hold, oh, hold the lamb. Hold shit. the actual lamb on my shoulder. Yes. Yeah. And I'm looking calm to the train, beloved. <laughs> <laughs> coming to, coming to the 
but then they, 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 the camera widens out and you see a bunch of people down on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I'm on, I'm on that. I'm on that shirt. Simplicity and directness. That's all. Well, that's that's after martial arts right that's there. Period. Yeah, that's, that's so why clinch is so important because the African martial arts in peacetime, what they do is uh, wrestle. Right. And so this is strong. part of wrestling. It's how you stay strong, how you have endurance, how you're working the principles. All the principles can come off of this. And I know this all translates into combative stuff. I had a, a brother from 52 blocks say, Bob, how are you so sensitive? Hmm. And that was from me. It's going to be clinching and pummeling. Well, this, this, this will build up our shape too, y'all. Well, friends of mine who, who do Chinese martial arts, they do, uh, like in, when you talk about Wing Chun, they do Chi Sao. It's called sticky hands, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is the same type of principle as what they do when they're doing this the sticky hand. It's, it's, it's one side yeah, of doing yeah, one, yeah, one side yeah. doing the other. Yeah, I've seen that before. I forgot how to it's just that. not close. So this hand, this hand just goes up and down. And the it's other hand time. Is doing the same thing. And this hand, right? This and my mine's doing, and this hand is doing like this. Yeah, it's some strange. So you go no, no. So this hand just goes up and down. This hand goes like this, and this hand right. <laughs> of course, it's probably better than this. Yeah. I, I don't mean no insult. It would look crazy though. I've seen it though. I've seen it. And, and so that one doing one side, one doing the other, the same as this. Yeah, it's like that we're mirroring. They just don't have real application though. And so from here, it the way to do. Go. I know from that sticky hand they do the, you know, hitting. Well, we kick from there, we throw from there. It's different. Yeah. So there's more complexity to what we're doing, but. I understand it. When I first saw it, I said, oh, they're coming. They said, no, 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 I'm not coming. Cheese out. Stick it, hang. Cheese out. Stick it, hang. Uh, my brother who, <laughs> who I said when, when, when the brother came up, Shango, not Shango, excuse me, Ifa Dare. I talked about Ifa Dare before. When he came up and did his thing. And he didn't have a partner, so he pulled people out the audience. He is working with Tai Chi. The best Tai Chi I ever seen. I said to the Chinese man, I know he did Wing Chun and, and Tai Chi. I said, that's your student? He said, no, no, I'm his student. Mm -hmm. I said, damn. I'm his student. And, that, and he was from China. It wasn't like, he, yeah, I'm his student. I'm Bob. He, right. I, I'm his student. He talked like that course. No insult to the Chinese. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounded like to me. I I kissed him. Right, right. So I said, damn, okay, you know. But then, you know, I, I have people from the continent who train with me. And people say, Did they did you train them? No, you trained me. Right. So I understood. I want to speak real quick about this clinch. One thing I want to speak to is is African martial arts that will, could throw you off if you are into other martial arts and never really seen this like that. It's the closeness, the tightness. The more you train, I think as a com combative, it makes, it starts making more sense to you. You start realizing when you're talking life and death, you got to minimize your risk. Mm -hmm. This man got a tool. I can't be out here with the tool. With a t-shirt wrapped around my goddamn hand like they do. I got to get up on that motherfucker. I got to close. Or be so far. That, it can, yeah. that it's in, in, in effect. Yeah. And so that's why you see, and if you don't see it, when you touch hands, you feel it. You seek that closeness. Because the closer I am to you, the less you got. And I ain't got to go far for you. Right. I, just, I just need control. The closest ain't stopping the power. The power is right. That's the power right up in right there. there. I don't need all that. I got you right up in here. Got the, that collar tie we talked about. Bring you towards that. Boom. His hip. That's it. I got all this right here. When he took me down, clamp, boom, this move, that's all he did. That's all the movement he did to, to take me down. It didn't take a lot. But if he didn't have that closeness to move me like that, what? I'm out. Right you know, he's trying to do all that. I ain't moving the same way. It ain't happening. hurt my back and shit. It, it, 
You need this bitch. He ain't got to do much. He just did some little bit. You ain't even see. I don't even think y'all just seen him move. You just see me moving. That's what I'm talking about. That's and that's I'm, real. It's not. You're not. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm. I'm. Listen. I'm at the point now. Nah, I'm at the point now. Nah, I'm testing myself. When Bobby do certain shit to me, I'm trying to resist to see where I'm at with this shit. Y'all don't even see that what's going on. So we do this shit. These moves. This shit. He put me in. I'm not giving it to y'all for the show. I'm over here still resisting more than I usually would be. You know what I'm saying? We might have to cut this up. We need to come up with those normal times. But anyway. So anyway, love y'all. Make sure you study this. Yes, sir. Uh, Keith Thurman was one of the few who does that type of fighting. Not sure who that is. Uh, love y'all. Stay black or whatever it is you may be. You got questions leave it in the comments suggestions or, or you can suggestions or you can hit us up on uh at warrior class bpm on instagram something you want to see let us know yes please do and we will see you all next time next week great show thank you emmanuel bridge uh everybody enjoy the rest of your week be safe and see you next time yes please. see you next saturday same time 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Black Power Media. And be sure to tune in to all the shows on Black Power Media. Uh, to, right before us, it's Saturdays with Renee. Tomorrow will be Sundays with the Ed Doctor. Um, me and my wife had a show on, on, on Sundays called After Spiritual Magician, but she travels to Africa so much, right. like she's been doing it in a minute, that I can't. Just do the show. I had to do the show without it. And over there, the power easy goes out. And so, um, you know, we don't have hiatus right now. I don't see us mm-hmm. not being on hiatus because mm-hmm. she travels so much, uh, at least twice a year to Nigeria, so in other places. So, um, but yeah, check it out on Sunday, Mondays, and everything else, y'all. All right. Are you serious? Love y'all. <laughs> I'm reading the comments. This person asked a question. It's funny. Love y'all. Uh, take care. Peace to everybody. Stay black, whatever it is you may be. Somebody wrap a pony. Just real quick. Somebody wrap a ponytail around your neck and can choke you down with it. Like on Kung Fu Theater, you deserve to be choked by the ponytail. And I, I'm sorry for you. Sorry for your loss. <laughs> I'm just saying. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a, if I was single and it was a girl, and can wrap her head, her ponytail around me and take me down to the ground. I love her. You love her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I was single, she would be getting white. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs> I'm going to come out on this one. Y'all be safe. Mm-hmm. Appreciate mm-hmm. your questions. Even the ones that are preposterous. <laughs> uh, I like the preposterous because they're the funny. With the ponytail walking from behind, wrap the ponytail around the person's neck and do the chokehold.